number 875. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. It doesn't matter what kind of a digital thing you need, a, a digital store to sell your products and or services, or maybe you just want to express yourself because you got feelings, man, and uh, or woman, and uh, Squarespace gives you everything you need to make your next move into a reality. And they have these beautifully designed templates and customizable features. So create a website. It's, it's simple to do so. And you just add and arrange your content with the click of a mouse. Any level of experience you have, Squarespace is absolutely the way to go. Start your free trial today. Squarespace.com. Enter the offer code NERDIST to get your first 10% off purchase. Now, uh, Katie Levine, I noticed that you're looking at, uh, well, let's just call it a corkboard. Yes. And let's just assume that it's from the Nerdist community. What would a Nerdist community corkboard type thing have on it presently? Well, we have a lot of cool things. Uh, the first thing on here is the Cleveland Vegan Society is having their Veg Fest uh, this Saturday, June 3rd, uh, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Huntington Convention Center of Cleveland. It's on Lakeside Avenue. They're going to have a lot of uh, vegan food and cooking demos. They're going to have speakers and live entertainment, children activities, film screenings, a cruelty-free marketplace. It sounds like it's going to be really fun. It is free, but they are asking for a donation if you're able to. And you can find out more info at clevelandvegansociety.org. Excellent. And then also, I just got this one in the mail. Uh, this is from Stephen Seigman. I think I'm he pronouncing mailed that, that right. to you. Yes, mailed it. No, from an That's email. Crazy. <laughs> and he said, uh, "My my wife Laura has embarked on an amazing project that I think the community might find interesting. Her father was killed by a distracted driver on their cell phone, and a few years later, my wife found his bucket list. He'd only crossed off five of sixty things, so now she's finishing the list in his memory that and writing is... about each one. And first of all." Fuck the person who know. was on their phone and hurt another person and took their life. Second of all, that's one of the most beautiful things I've Isn't ever that? heard. That is one of the most beautiful things and I've ever And so you can look at and see what she's doing and writing about at myfatherslist.com. Oh my God. How can you not just start crying? <laughs> I, I mean, know. that's so. That's, that is incredible. And Isn't I. That's sweet. Yes. Holy shit. I don't even know what to say <laughs> after that. I mean, that is. What are, what are their names? Uh, Stephen and Laura. Stephen and Laura, I love you so fucking much that, <laughs> that you're doing this, Laura. Thank you. I'm. Yes. It's it's a horrible, horrible, horrible thing that happened, but the fact that you're that you're taking this tragedy and turning into something positive and beautiful to expand your horizons and live out through your father's uh, wish list bucket list is is it's, it's just stunning it's a stunning thing to do yeah. so check it out and see is there, what, what, what can people do is there anything I mean she's just writing about just, them. so just so yeah just, so just go to my father's list.com and you can see what she's doing and, and she's writing about each experience well this episode of the podcast is Wayne Coyne of, of the flaming lips uh, he's promoting their new album Oxy Melody or Oxy Melody or oxy melody or oxy melody. We talk. We we kind of. He says it's open to interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> but he explains in the podcast how he hears it. But the album is fucking fantastic. Uh, and Wayne was super cool. And uh, and I I mean I had never met I had never met Wayne or any or any of the lips. <laughs> and uh, but it was he was absolutely delightful. Also, the band is touring the United States and Europe all summer long. So you should look it up. Go see them. Their live shows are great and, uh, and support, support a flaming lip near you. <laughs> this episode also brought to you by Blue Apron. Uh, springtime, you know, hit the reset button. Retackle those personal goals like getting fit, cleaning up, cleaning up your lifestyle, cooking even. Uh, Blue Apron makes incredible home cooking easy and accessible by delivering seasonal recipes with step-by-step -step instructions and pre-portioned ingredients right to your door, all for less than $10 a meal. I... I got this for my mom. I've gotten it for other family members. They absolutely love it because my mom loves to. She really does love to cook. She loves to like get her hands so in there. So much fun. Yeah, I don't think activity. she would not be happy if it. I it, and it's the perfect balance because if she just got pre-made meals delivered to her, yeah. probably wouldn't be that fun. If she just got, you know, I don't know. If she just had to go to the store and get her own stuff, it's not. It's not as fun. So it's the perfect combination of like being active but passive at the same yeah. time. So, uh, again, all for less than 10 bucks per meal. You can customize recipes based on preference. Select a delivery option that is right for you. There's no weekly commitment. You only get deliveries when you want them. So just in June, just for example, warm smoked trout, asparagus salad, fingerling potatoes, garlic croutons, spiced zucchini, enchiladas with creamy lime and tomato rice. 
Uh, you have uh, peach honey glazed chicken, mashed sweet potatoes, collard greens, Thai basil. These are just some examples of, of, it all of stuff so that you can good. make. I'm so hungry. Yeah, I know. Me too. I actually, <laughs> I, I start like I had to wipe a little bit of spittle out of the corner of my mouth. It's just when I got to the word Thai basil, I just was like, okay, easy there. But check out this week's menu. Get your first three meals free with free shipping. Go to blueapron.com slash Nerdist. You're going to love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals at Blue Apron. Don't wait. Blueapron.com slash Nerdist. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. And now... Here's a better way to podcast from there's podcast number 875 with Wayne Coyne as Katie Levine rolls the thing. Now entering Nerdist.com. Welcome. All right. Does this place always look like this? It does. Yeah, this is my, my dressing room office is through that door, and so I took over the space and, oh, I see. and sort of I, I'll show you when we're done. But it's yeah, uh, yeah it all it all kind of looks like this. Is this like stuff that you've just collected over your over the years? Yes, and it's it's. I really wish I could fit more of it in here because I'm, oh, I'm just running. I'm, I'm running out of space for all my fucking toys. And my wife is awesome, so she keeps like she she just orders stuff. And goes here, I got you. Like this job of the hut, I got you this job, and I go, that's really great. There's we don't have any room. Please. Well, no, I know that's what everybody. That's I know that's that's the dilemma. It's like the world of plastic toys is like well, where do you put it? <laughs> I never thought I'd be in a space where I married someone who actually understood the things I like, and I got to a point where I was like, "You got to stop! I don't know where I'm going to put all this stuff anymore." Right. When we're done, can you call my wife for me because my son's Star Wars collection is squeezing us out of the, the house. <laughs> well, and she that's fair though. Less understand. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it all original action figures and stuff, or what does he collect? He keeps it in the box. Yep. And the whole room looks like a. Star you know, the crazy thing now is yeah. that the, the, the idea of whether or not to take something out of the box is, is so because when it, at that time yeah. people didn't really think about that, and so it things were more limited. Yeah. But now everyone people make things with the idea of like, oh, you're going. This is a collector's thing. So I wonder if that makes it less special somehow now. Well, so. Most people buy two. They just buy two, yeah. <laughs> I think it does make it slightly less. <laughs> well, you know, you, you could be right, but everyone we still know, the really hardcore collectors buy two. I mean, I, 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 I spy that vintage-looking Star Trek shirt underneath your jacket, so I... I you did. <laughs> Is there, do you think that's good or bad? I think it's awesome. I do, too. Because otherwise you're buying it from, you know, like the Star Trek.com and it just... You know, the idea that you can buy it at Target, I think, is a great It's thing. nice that this... Well, and the, it looks vintage. It's kind of got the... Does. Yeah, you know. It's, nice that, it's yeah. nice that it's culturally acceptable now. Do you collect Don't anything, you, Wayne? I, I I don't think I do. But, <gasps> I mean, I mean, yeah. Those shoes are were just talking, because I collect sneakers, and those are pretty great. Yeah, these are the uh, SB line. I, I, all I do is collect... Well, I don't collect sneakers. No, you do. You yeah. and you got me the, the, these. But I think the, the purple iridescent thing is... Those are some almost Back to the Future two looking shoes yeah. that you got that you're rocking yeah. there. No one can afford the real Back to the Future shoes. Actually, they're, they're like t- ten grand or twenty grand. Oh, they're grand. sixteen grand or something crazy like that. I got some of the I got some of the the limited edition Nikes that for for Alien from Alien when she oh, wore those. Oh, yeah, those are nice. I got some of those. But Wayne also Wayne, Wayne's rocking some pretty nice lavender. Well, well, no, Rick got me these. See, he got me these. They look good though. They're very cozy for sure. I I, yeah. I like them. So you said you didn't collect, you don't collect anything. I don't think so. See, but I, I maybe maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't think so. Four, four, I think we started to collect things like you know even like things like that that you think man that's just cool and then you you get a lot of them and you don't know where to put them after a while but i would imagine you know uh do you still live in oklahoma yeah yeah mm-hmm. so you, yeah. you 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 probably have quite a compound in oklahoma i would imagine well yeah yeah and we do have a lot of stuff but it's not i know i think we've we've i think because we would start to make things that we thought people would collect right you know and then we 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 
the concept of making like candy and stuff like that that was that we thought was sort of temporary that right. was our solution to be like do we really need another <laughs> plastic thing that goes on the shelf <laughs> and yeah I, I don't know is there a weird flaming lips thing that you made where you're like ah, maybe we shouldn't have made that well, yeah yeah there's 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 lots of that but not not i mean I, now i think we're more um we like the idea that we, you know, that we make stuff, and for people that like it, it's they, right. they think it's wonderful. I think they, you know, they want to give you their their money and have a little piece of something that you've made. I think if it's if it feels more um, more like a piece of art or something, right? You know, like when we do uh, posters and stuff, you know, you try as best you can to have them feel like they're a limited, right? You know, silk screen, real real people did them or something like that. Well, because you, you, you're not just a – you guys aren't just a band, though. You you guys are an experience. Your live <laughs> well, shows yeah. are an experience. Your but fan I, community I is an all, experience. I think all artists probably think that, though. You know? I don't know. I feel like, you know, it's it, – like Flaming Lips albums are the, are, the, are the few types of albums that I will just listen to start to finish. Well, that well, thank you. That's a, that's a great compliment. No, I, but, I, but I would say some, some artists are probably not making records for that. They're like, yeah, you know, pick a couple songs and party, right. party to them. So, yeah, I, I don't know. But yeah, I I I I agree, and that's that's a great compliment. Did you ever? Did, did, was that by design? Were you like, well, we don't want to just be a single <laughs> band, or was it like because the albums really do unfold the story? Like they really do, kind of. Well, yeah. Um, like the way people used to listen to music when I was a kid, no, you'd buy I mean, an no, album. And no, you'd... I mean, we would do. We would go back and forth. I mean, even even like. Um, even like a, a band like Alice Cooper or something, you right. know, who you'd say are great. I mean, I would still say I wouldn't listen to, you know, hardly a whole album. There would be songs and I could say right. I like them, but I wouldn't know a whole album. And they, you know, like a group like the Bee Gees or something that you could like singles right. off the radio or something. Even David Bowie, you know, there's a few of his albums that are, you know, that you would know the whole album. But there's quite a few of his albums that you just know them. A couple of the songs, and right. it's David Bowie. So, right. yeah, I, I think it can go all over the place, you know. I think the Rolling Stones maybe even could be like that, you know, where I wouldn't know every song on even their biggest albums, right? You know? Well, yeah, um, I mean, because I think some – I mean, I understand the idea of like, okay, we well, are assembling songs and go, okay, these songs all make sense <laughs> together. But that's different than, you know – Especially something like Yoshimi, where you go, okay, you start you start at the beginning, and then there, there's a story right, by right. the end, and you can no, listen to the whole no, thing. No, I agree. I just, I, I just sometimes have a hard time saying I think one is better than the other. It's right? Like you know, I mean, I think some some artists. I think what the difference is is they feel like I'm just I'm a singer and then you get to hear me sing. It doesn't really matter what the song right. is or what all the other stuff is about. And I think as the Flaming Lips, I mean, we take it the other way. It's like we're not really like entertainers. We're we're making this this bunch of you know sounds and you know all these things. It's not it, you know it's not like just put a microphone in front of us and you know it's so. Yeah, that, I think that's probably the difference. You know, Mick Jagger probably thinks, yeah, well, you just want to – of course you want to hear Mick Jagger. It doesn't really matter what song I'm doing. Right. You know, whereas it would, it would be the opposite with us. It's like I don't, I'm not sure you really want to hear us. It's everything that we've made up or – you know, it's all a, a construct. To, right. Yeah. So, Did you ever see the Tubes perform? Um, no, but I've seen, you know, you've seen videos and pictures and yeah, it, but, but I didn't always, I mean, I've, I only know a little bit of their music, but yeah. it, you know, but it, obviously they're, you know, some kind of insane well, stage the, show at some point. Those kind yeah. of legendary stage shows where yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, it, when you understand a little bit of the business of the side, you go, first of all, how'd you guys make any money <laughs> with right. like that many people yeah, on exactly. stage yeah, yeah. and that many theatrics? Yeah. See, you shouldn't ask those questions. That, that, that <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like, that's, that's. You know, no one asked the Wizard of Oz, like, how'd you, how'd you pay for all this right. stuff? Yeah, that ruins it. Yeah, that's Not no that fun. it should, not, yeah. not that that should be their main focus, but I just feel like you probably shouldn't lose money when you go on a tour. It's... Well, yeah, but see, now everybody's aware of those things. Yeah, right. that, that's, no, that's no fun. Yeah. Um, we would sometimes uh, think about the Parliament Funkadelic uh, mothership, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and there's, just, there's not that much um, – even old videos of that any, anymore. You know, there's pictures and there's stories about it. But there was one actual video. It's probably out there on YouTube somewhere or something. And, and, the, and the spaceship is just actually like this big. You know, you, just, you could just hold it in your hand. And it came down on a, on a cable, um, you know, like somewhere over the audience for just a moment. And it sort of went on a cable. And then they just appeared on stage, you know. And, yeah. and, but the idea, like, you'd see a spaceship – 
you just see a photo of it and you wouldn't know how big it is and then they're all dressed up like you know crazy you know like they came from outer space or whatever and you would never think about it but like yeah nowadays there would just be too much evidence of like <laughs> right look how little it actually is 20,000 yeah. pictures yeah. on Instagram this doesn't this doesn't work look how little it is and all that but um yeah so it it is diff- more difficult nowadays to to you know to have the mystery be compelling because right. everybody wants to know uh, how's how's it made now you know i mean that's how how are things done right. that's that's part of the cool world we live in is you get to find out i mean it used to be i mean we would we would ask the question how do they put the m on the m and m's mhm you know, it's like every one of them. They're little. They're little and they're fragile. And yet, when you look at uh, ten million M and M's laid out, they all have this little white M on them. Right. And back in the day, you would just go, "Oh my God! Well, how do they do that? I mean, what kind of great futuristic machine is taking every one of those and putting an M on it?" And then now, now there's these shows. You know, they show you how everything's made, and it's it's. It's it, not a large anthropomorphic M M&M and M stamping. <laughs> well, it's a on big, it's a big, tiny brother. It's, it's a big. What is it? It's a big silk screen. Conveyor belt. Oh, it's a know, silk it's, screen. It's like it just lays on there and hits them all. And I know. I mean, it's just a. It, and so, for me, I sometimes feel like that it makes it even better when you know how things are done, as opposed to it being a mystery and your imagination, you know, just sure. letting it be. And I, I remember when we would cover. Um, like a, a Pink Floyd song or like mm-hmm. a Beatles song. And we would run into musicians that that would say, um, doesn't it kind of ruin it for you, you know, once you know how everything is done? And and and, and we would always think, well, no, I think it, it even makes it better because when you're really in there and you see how much or how impossible and how improbable it is to make anything that's special and original and and meaningful, I mean – you know, when you see how like big budget movies are made, it's like, oh, it's it's no wonder they're unwatchable most of the time, <laughs> you know, because it's just thousands of people and so much money and so much pressure. Yeah. I mean, most of the people that are making them are just glad that it comes out at all and everybody right. gets paid. You know, it's just too much to have any sort of quality control. And when you know that how much of that chaos is going into it. I think it's 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 a it's 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 even greater achievement when it comes out the other side and is actually wonderful and entertaining well, and meaningful and powerful and all that. Yeah, you and know? you also kind of get to walk the path a little bit of like, oh, this is what they did to, yeah, yeah. you know. I mean, sometimes I think movies um there's even movies that aren't even very good movies, but when you see how they're made, you have a new respect for sure. you know, just it it, it being made or something. So, there's a lot of Ways to be interested in things, yeah. I love that. Uh, <laughs> I, I love how much you embrace Oklahoma, and I love how much Oklahoma embraces you. I mean, like when you go to, because I performed it at the University of Oklahoma, Norman. Oh, I and see. I think Norman's a great town. I really right? like Norman a lot. Right. And when you land in the airport, it's like you guys, are, you're uh, you're in the airport. Well, we were. Now they've scraped all all of us down. I, I don't know what happened. Maybe, what? Yeah, yeah. I know. I always felt like they would scrape us down and leave everybody else up, but they did. They left. They scraped the whole window. Maybe it. Was just a different, yeah. I may, I, I, actually, I think you, quite a few of the people that were on the window died while the window was up. So it, yeah, maybe it started, <laughs> to seem, it started to seem like a, a fore, death window. Yeah, a for a foreshadowing of what was to come. They were yeah. saving your life, <laughs> is what they were doing. Yeah, if you stayed on the window, you were going to die a, 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 a sad untimely you know uh, but no that didn't happen i'm still here yeah well that's good yeah, yeah, i, I yeah, wonder if it's, yeah. it, it, they, it, it would be that'd be that'd be a great movie though wouldn't it yeah the the death window it'd be like yeah it'd be like yeah. death note but it's a window and yeah. if you're on the window yeah. then you're gonna yeah. die you're yeah. absolutely gonna yeah. die yeah did you ever but no i see i feel like oklahoma has really made that part of my character made me aware of it you know i think oklahoma's done more for me than i've done for it at all i mean having this <laughs> This identity, you know, that I probably early on would have wouldn't have even known what, um, you know, what being from Oklahoma would mean. Uh, you know, I mean, when you live there, it probably it, it probably is a little bit more abstract than when you would. You know, we'd go out into the world, and there would be 
a kind of stereotypical, exaggerated version of what people think from Oklahoma. It's probably still based on that Rodgers and Hammerstein <laughs> right. play. I mean, and I remember talking to um, our, our, our sound engineer and his um, mother was was – taking a trip from – I think it was from somewhere in Pennsylvania out to Arizona. And she was worried because the train had to go through Oklahoma. And she thought, you know, we might get robbed by some Indians out there. Jesus and I'm like, well, <laughs> see? And you never know what, what part of the you know people's minds is still stuck in this I mean, stereotypical – I mean, that Dust Bowl yeah. thing, you know, you might not make it out. <laughs> well, I know it's dusty out there. Yeah, you know, it's a lot to go through. So – and I, you know, even traveling – even the first times that we would go to Europe and stuff, you know, it would be a kind of like, wow, you know, uh, you guys are from Oklahoma and you're doing this kind of music. But it, it, it took us a while to understand, oh, they've got this Wild West, you know, um, this, this very old fashioned, you know, uh, vision of where we come from. That's not like that at all. Right. And then I think it was not too long ago. It was, you know, maybe five or six years ago that – the basketball team and the Flaming Lips, you know, the Thunder and the Flaming Lips both came from Oklahoma. And then we started to get, you know, that little bit more of a modern take on what it must be right. like to, to live in Oklahoma City. You must know the Thunder. And we, even though we don't really know them, I mean, we'd, we'd say, well, we kind of do. You sure. Know? Yeah, yeah, we've been to the games and, and I've taken pictures with, with some of the basketball players. And, well, so, and yeah. <laughs> is, 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 is Do You Realize still the official song it of is, Oklahoma? It's not. See, all this. What in the well, fuck has happened well, there look, in look, the last few years? Well, see, this is, these are like, it's, it's like the window. Yeah, it was, it was a <laughs> temporary shrine to great things that are made by, I mean, the, the governor, at the time, he was a quite a progressive um, Democrat who, who was lucky to have two terms. And like a lot of uh, two two term things, when you get to the end of that, you just do whatever the fuck you want. Right, yeah, right, and right. That was right, one right. of them. That yeah. was one of the things. Yeah, and I think the very next person that came in said, "Well, as soon as I can get rid of that, I will." No, that's I'm, I'm exaggerating that, but I think it was it was to be there for a little while. And I think if there was some campaign put together that would make sure it stayed there, then then it probably would. But I, I, yeah, I don't think that was ever put in place. But I think the story of it being the state song of Oklahoma has now grown bigger than the reality of it would ever be. So, you know, at some point, you would ask me that question five years from now, and I'll just say, well, of of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, it'll, and that'll just be the way it you know, is. Listen, you know? we live in a world where people don't check shit anymore. Well, no. Let's well, just right. say it is, and that will make it true <laughs> for or, a percentage or of the Or we population. do live in a world where they do. And I, no, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I try to remember that it isn't actually. But um, the fact that it was at one time um, still seems, you know, living there and being part of all that – that was indeed an, an absurd moment. Now, maybe it doesn't seem that absurd to the rest of the world now, you know, but when we were there to be embraced by the city and we have a, we have a, a, a fairly uh, well-used alley in a, in a kind of, you know, big center of Oklahoma City that's named Flaming Lips Alley, mm -hmm. and it'll probably stay there, you know, until the – you know, that part of the town gets destroyed or something. So that's still there. So both of these things kind of happened at the same time. So we had, you know, um, it's it, it's an alley, but I think it, the short version of it is that you have a street named after you. And, right. You know, and if you're not there, you, 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 you picture this great, you know, four lane, <laughs> you know, luscious, <laughs> you know, boulevard going down. The, but it's not. It's just a little a little alley. Um so I think, yeah, the, what you believe it is probably takes over more of, than what it really is. But I, I think it's wonderful. I mean, people still, you know, you'll be driving down the street like, you have a street named after you. And yeah, I mean, it's, um, I so, mean, it's still pretty great. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Has someone gone in and, 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 and decorated the alley and tricked it out so it's no, all crazy? No, I mean, you think, you think they, they would or, or, or maybe it just doesn't occur to people. Yeah. I mean, I thought at some point there would be like, um, you know, we, we – thought that maybe we should steal the sign and just steal it ourselves <laughs> just to put in place like how important we are that people will come to Oklahoma and steal the sign. Sure. But no one's ever even <laughs> done that. There's no one. I mean, he has like the, 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 
what we call you know the rock and roll college you know is situated exactly on his, their their campus their building their their structure that the school is in is exactly on flaming nip sally so that's a great coincidence okay well yeah, that's yeah. nice yeah and and so all that works out but i don't think all any of that's obvious if you're just traveling through town but i'll get i'll see uh, you know pictures on on the internet and stuff of of groups traveling through Oklahoma and stumbling upon this. And I would think this is a great hopeful thing that you could be, you know, just, just a weirdo outsider arty group doing your thing. And yet a, a sort of mainstream, you know, sort of nowhere, middle America place like Oklahoma city could embrace you. I think that's good news. I think that's great. And it, cause I think, you know, I don't think the Midwest really gets enough credit a lot of times. <laughs> I think when people think about the Midwest, they go, ah, it's the Midwest. What happened? You know, yeah. it's a flyover. Like, no, there's yeah, yeah. a lot of culture there. There's a lot of really great. I, mm. I mean, Norman is a charming town. Well, yeah, it, 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 it I mean, and it's all becoming, I mean, for better, for worse, it's all becoming a little bit more generic. You know, everywhere you go is is sort of becoming, yes. you know, a little bit more. There's your the Target. Same. There's your Applebee's. There's your Starbucks. There's and, your yeah, Starbucks, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. Your, yeah. Which I think is better, you know. Um, it, it, I think it makes it a little bit less stressful or or whatever to go and visit places. Cause, sure. Um, you know, you kind of know. Oh, there's the, a bit of it's all familiar to me, and some of it's not. And, I mean, I yeah, do, I do. Yeah. When people do get mad at me when I go to towns and I go, "Where's the?" You know, I got to find the Starbucks. Why don't you drink local? I go because I just need a consistent experience, and I travel so much that it, that, that's, that's it very exactly. For me. I know. I that's it exactly because <laughs> I'm I'm always doing that. I go to the to the front desk of the hotel and say, "Where's there a Starbucks?" And they. I mean, to their credit, they think they're doing you a favor by pointing out the five right. you know, nice, you know, locally run, you know, coffee shops. But I'm like you. It's like I don't <laughs> go. I'm not going in there to read the paper or to get on the internet. And and I'm I want coffee now. I want a, I want a predictable yeah. experience. So <laughs> and I, I want I can it fast. I need to do yeah, yeah. Exactly. It, this is entertainment <laughs> for me. And I and I know and 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 maybe we've. I know. Maybe we've taken something away from that, you know, that it, that it should be like, oh, this is the coffee shop in this town and we should right. just, you know, s- relax and, you know. But you but, still got it. Yeah. But when you got – you know, I always yeah. think about it this way. I go, well, I'm there to do a job. My job, it, yeah. you know, comes first when I'm there. Yeah, and yeah. I have a – you know, like it yeah. helps me not – like it I just it helps control my experience no, so that I do I, a good I, job I, when no, I'm there. No, I know. I think this is this is a secret code of something that we we shouldn't talk about <laughs> because I know it makes us look like <laughs> these old guys who have to have the same breakfast every everywhere we go. Yeah. <laughs> instead of breakfast. instead of loving the new experience, <laughs> we're like, no. As, but um but no, I I, I uh, totally agree. Yeah. On yeah, vacation yeah. I will try the new experiences, but right. when I'm there to work, well, I as need soon the as you get experience. your coffee, everything changes. Yeah, it's that first cup of coffee that you really you don't want there to be a lot of fuss. Or a no, lot of, yeah. no. I mean, I sometimes will go into the Starbucks um, and I'll forget that there's a lot of a lot of people there that would, you know, they, they know me or they'd recognize me. Um, but they're also jacked up on coffee. Right. You know, so it usually could just be like, hey, Wayne, how you doing? It's like, hey, Wayne. And then let me tell you my whole life story right. while you're waiting to get your Right, coffee. right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's also the other um, – uh, f- physiological part of it, which is, if I try something new and it doesn't sit well in my stomach, oh, I can't have diarrhea on stage. There's right. just no time for right. fucking around with right. that. Like, no, that, need... that's a ser- that's a serious <laughs> dilemma. It really is. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that, have you had that? I've never, I've never had it, but I've been, I've, I've, I've had I've been it, but close. I've not, but I've not had it happen. I no. mean, I've had it, but it's all stayed. I, I did have yeah. I, I did have a thing once where I, I don't I ate so, I ate some I ate too much food before I was performing and I didn't feel right but I but I didn't have time to uh, evacuate the <laughs> the area and uh, and I went on stage and this is gross and I apologize to Katie and Debbie in this room like <laughs> ten minutes into the set a small silent fart leaked out on stage and I spent the next forty five minutes going. Did I shit my pants? Well, you and mean what's going to happen? When not I in, get not, not outwardly, but it, secretly. Secretly, yeah, yeah. So that was just living in the back of my brain yeah, yeah. during the entire set and going. For sure, yeah. Should I not get too close to? I don't know. You know, no, you, you shouldn't. can't always smell yourself. So right, I right. just didn't. And th- thankfully, the answer was no. That did not happen. Right. But right. I thought about it the entire time. Of course. Yeah. 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 That's uh, that's a that's a modern that's a modern dilemma. There's not that many <laughs> dilemmas anymore. But that would be that would be one. There's not that often. What about you? What was your 
Well, nothing happened. Okay. I mean, I, I knew it was it was a rumble in the jungle. You know? Right. And and but I kind of feel like there's some some uh, mechanism that allows you to be in this. It's adrenaline. Uh, probably. Yeah, it, it must be because I mean, I, I've I've noticed this when you're when you do talk shows and stuff. People don't sneeze on TV. I, I mean, you would think as much as. Sneezing happens just all the time. Mm-hmm. That you would, there would be a certain amount of like, oh yeah, I remember when they, you know, someone sneezed and, and and whatever. But it just doesn't really happen, you know. And I wondered, like, there must be some things that are shutting down when the adrenaline is just happening. Just to focus, yeah. That you that you are able to rise above it. I remember watching. Um, when we did Lollapalooza back in, in, the, in the early 90s, it was a traveling uh, show. So you'd go from city to city. Um, and we got to be friends with uh, the Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. And they would play early in the day. We'd play later in the day. So we'd, we'd get some coffee and stuff and we'd go watch the, you know, the groups play. And I remember the one day, uh, of all people, you, know, you think of, of, of Nick as this kind of this dignified, you know, very cool <laughs> at all costs, this very cool <laughs> entertainer. And I remember him standing there and he was talking about like that he really was, was afraid that he was going to go out there and really go for the uh, – and, <laughs> and I, I remember watching him. I remember him kind of watching him. It was, he, was, he would clench his, you know, his, his butt a little bit and, and – and he, but but he got through it. He got through it. He did, and See, we and we talked about that. We talked about how how there is some mechanism that is really still with you. It's not just. I gotta say, as as, as an argument for going to see live shows, knowing that creates a whole other dimension. There's like a tightrope walk. Like, is he gonna, <laughs> is it happening now? Well, like, I mean, what a great, well, for me, it's only happened a couple of times and that's a long time of sure. doing stuff and not really. Sure. So I'm not that, I don't have that much anxiety about, but I'm, but I'm with you. I mean, on days like today, when you're going to perform, I mean, you do kind of have an idea of what you're going to put in and what's right. going to happen. You don't want to be up there and right. feeling any, and you kind of get into yeah. your patterns. You don't really think about it too much because it's, right. just, it's just part of your pattern. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but yeah, if you've had those – I think it does take sometimes those, those sort of experiences. They sear it into your – you know, <laughs> into, into the, what you don't want to happen, you know. And then it, then it really does change the way you think about when you're going to – but coffee is like that. Coffee – you add coffee to your gut and – you don't know what's going to happen. Well, that's why you want the consistent that's experience. That's why you want the consistent yeah, experience. It's not just you a, know it's not exactly just how it's a drink. Be, there's you know a, exactly. There, yeah, there's an afterwards <laughs> that we're worried about. Did yeah. you yeah. – did I read correctly? <laughs> did you work at Long John Silver's for 13 years? I did, but not everybody knows what that is, right? A Long John Silver's is, is not a very – they're not hardly around anymore, but it was a – you know, it's, a, it's fish the, and chips. Yeah, fish and chips. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the Americanized version of, of what you would think of as English fish and chips. Well, when I, yeah. I I was born in Kentucky and I grew up in Memphis and we had we had those there. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, uh, a Midwest thing, sort of. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it, and I can't imagine that when I look back, when I think back about eating it now, because I just I used to eat, I used to like to really eat all the extra crunchy. Oh, exactly. That no, fall exactly. Up. That's those are crumblies. That's I mean, people would come in and order just that. Did yeah. you sell? You would sell those? Yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah. And, and every yeah, that I mean, that's that was what part of the secret oh of all God. that. Talk yeah. about talk about like diarrhea. No, and it and is making. good, and it is absolutely good. I mean, it's it, it's a great. Eating experience, but yeah, I mean, it's it's. it's I mean, it's just grease and, and <laughs> it, very it's little all the fish. Delicious and, things that are the worst yeah, things that yeah. you should that you should have. And it was, you know, I think at at, at the at the time, it still felt like there there was a lot of people that were eating fish on Fridays, right? Is that a is that that's like a religious? You know, is that a Catholic thing? Yeah, something about you know, and so Fridays would be especially. You know, hectic, busy, busy days. And to think of like that eating the fish was supposed to be some sort of sacrifice that you're making, I thought. Right. Not right? eating red meat, I think. Yeah. Something like, you know, we're, well, you know, we're, we're, we're aware of, of, of our indulgences or something. I, I don't know. But l- this fish at Long John Silver's, I mean, there's so little fish in there, this great greasy mm-hmm. bunch of batter and, and the French fries and all that. And the hush puppies. Oh, know? the hush puppies yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, and the coleslaw, everything about it was just an outrageously, um, you know, the, 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 the coleslaw with its, with its dressing and all that. It's just amazing. Yeah. And I worked there for a long, long time and I, and I loved it. I mean, I loved, you know, the food and I loved working there and, you know, I had a lot of great experiences, but never, 
I didn't realize that how unhealthy <laughs> it really was. You know, I, love I mean, I think back then everything there wasn't that much. You know, this was, I started there in nineteen seventy seven, so long, long time ago. Back, you know, at the when 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 uh, fast food was just people didn't really worry about. No, it health. was just faster than other food. It was faster yeah, yeah. and <laughs> and fattier and more delicious, and you could get it into your body quicker. But I love the yeah. idea that 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 was that there's a religious movement behind Long John Silver's. Like, did 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 the Lord say go forth and let your John Silver's be long? Or was there some sort of a well, yeah. religious? Yeah, I know. I remember that. And then and then during <laughs> is it Lent? Is that is that is that? That's around the yeah. Easter time. Is That's before Lent? you got to give up the. Yeah, and we would be especially busy then. Yeah, I never connected it that much, but I remember, you know, from just you know working there every year, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, that's." I'm uh, surprised. Yeah. Is Long John Silver still around? It is still it around. Is, I see. But I, see I, the but head I head. see it now. It, it's like it's connected to like you know a, a Kentucky Fried Chicken and an A and W and a Long John Silver's. They'll all be in the same thing. I'm know? surprised yeah. there's not some sort. I'm surprised they haven't approached you and said, "Let's do a Flaming Lips box with spicy <laughs> fish." And oh, I just I just see their e- your ears just went up. Your manager, <laughs> like manager, listen, oh, oh, think I got about you. it. The spicy is flaming. The yeah, flaming yeah, lips, yeah, I, the flaming lips I, box. I, I like it. And I then like there's it. there's fun flaming lips toys inside. I, I agree. I like. Oh my I like god, this, this is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like this. He literally just did the. He just put the. He did the, 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 the hand yeah. on the chin yeah. in, in a contemplative yeah. chin stroke. Yeah. It's more it's more. It's more worried about that. Okay, <laughs> all right. Listen, if you don't want a billion dollars, which that would make uh, clearly, uh, but I, but I love the fact that you loved working at Long John Silver's because that was. So if you started in seventy seven, thirteen years, nineteen ninety. That well, means- I mean, well, when I was sixteen, you know, that was the the year I was you know turned sixteen, and uh, back then that was the year you could start to have a job, you know. That yeah, was, but that yeah. means you worked there until you were 33, uh, at 30. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and it was, you know, we got signed to Warner Brothers uh, probably in the late of 1990 and still worked there, not very much, but was still working there, you know, even through some of that, yeah. But but you know. the early flaming, like the early iteration of the band, you were working at Long John Silver's. Oh, yeah, the That's whole time. Great. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and... I mean, and they they wanted me to be an assistant manager and all this stuff, but I didn't I didn't really want to because it just took up too much time. And then by the end of it, I would have six weeks of paid vacation every year, you know, sure. to be a touring, to go out on tour and do all that, and still get your eighty dollars a week from Long John Silver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> but I think it really it really it, it really worked for me, you know, because I didn't want to. I didn't really want a serious job that took, you know, a lot, a lot of time and a lot of responsibility. Um, with that, I probably wouldn't have been very good at it anyway. And this was the type of job that, within the first two weeks, you've got this thing. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's kind of mindless work in a way once you know, you know, the routines of it. And yeah, I, I it, it really worked for me because it, I, you know, it, it, it made me enough uh, money that I could sort of live. And a pirate costume. It, well, yeah, you know, yeah, year yeah. round, you could you could be <laughs> I mean, a pirate. Funny now, I do I do occasionally wear an eye patch on stage. <laughs> but I, yeah. shout out to your roots. Well, I, it, it and plus it just looks cool on an old guy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, know you just look tougher or something. But yeah, I, I think it's funny how all those things they do connect. You know, it's like. That's the that's the wonder of the subconscious, you know. You think it's you doing it with your, with your conscious mind up here, and there's all these things working below the surface that you just get to have for yeah, better or for worse. But I, I also yeah. I also love that you know because you referred to your to your band as like oh we're this arty band and we got this mainstream thing. But I love that you're not snobby about any of it. Where you're like hey that's kind of cool. Like you embrace. You well, know, you seem very positive about everything, and not like and you, not. And then when I hear arty band, I think like, oh, that those people are probably really annoying to hang out with because they're so arty. But oh you no, just, I I know exactly that that feeling. Yeah, I know I know what that is. So how yeah, are how are, yeah, how, are yeah. how are how are you not that? Well, I mean, I think I mean art is just a description. That doesn't mean it's great or superior or anything. It's like it's just to acknowledge. I mean, I'm you know when I say. I'm an artist. I'm not always proud of that. I mean, I see it as being a, a slightly annoying obsession to, <laughs> to some people. But you know, it's some some good things come out of it, and it and it and it seems to work for me. But yeah, I I, I know exactly what you mean, though. There's there's a there's a not just pretentious, but a kind of um, you know, like the the like the world doesn't understand me sort of thing. And I I, I always hated that. You know, it's not up to the world. To understand you, it's up to you to 
you know, make yourself understood, right? Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, but do, do your fans do your fans understand that about you? Do that? Are, do you have the type of relationship with them where anything you do, they go, "Oh yeah," because you know? Well, the- I think some of them, yeah. But I mean, we don't. We're not. We're not. We're not playing to millions and millions of normal housewives either. You right. know, I mean, we're, we're, you know, a lot of times we are playing to, you know, the, the kind of, you know, the, the freakiest of the, the freaks out there. Right. Right. <laughs> Which we want, you know, and they're musicians and they're artists and they're, you know, doing their own thing as well. So, I mean, most, most groups have an element of that, you know, that the, the people that really love you, they, uh, they're they kind of doing what you're doing. You know, they they understand it. Yeah. I mean, did they – so when you are, start collaborating with Miley Cyrus, are they, <laughs> are they going, yeah, because that's what I'm, they do? Or they go, well, uh, what is this? Well, I think there's – there's the, the, I mean, because we've been doing it for uh, a couple of years now, there are – I see there are segments of our audience, you know. Um, there would be one segment of our audience that's older that wouldn't really know – um, Miley Cyrus. They wouldn't really know even who she is, and they would probably think, well, if the Flaming Lips like her, I like her, and sure. it doesn't matter. And then there'd be this middle audience that's just old enough and young enough to know who she is and probably know her from more than Hannah Montana than anything else. Right. And would think, oh my God, this is, uh, why is this? You know, or the flame, the flame is trying to go, you know, in, in this commercial way or this Walt Disney world. What is this? And uh, they're probably the, the, the ones that were the most confused and the most anti uh, Miley Flaming Lips, you know. And then you've got, you know, the segment that's young that kind of knows Miley from being more of like the twerking and stuff like right. that than from anything else. And they think it's, it's fun and radical. Yeah. And so, you know, so there's, you know, the old people that don't know, they love it. And the young people that do know, they love it. There's that area in the middle. <laughs> and I can understand that. You know, I can understand if you, you know, if you grew up in that time where, you know, you, you loved your music and yet you were kind of assailed by the popularity of something like a, a, you know, like Miley, you know, you might be annoyed that why are, you know, why are these guys now joining forces with her? And I think I'm probably more in the old person category where I wouldn't really know that much about her other than the little bits of it that I thought were interesting sure. starting in 2013. And now as I go back, I get more of an, you know, an idea of what, you know, some of the world thinks of her. So it would be, it would be kind of a, a crossover of, of all that. Yeah. But I think it all gets a little less, um, intense, um, the bad part of it anyway, once we made the record with her and people get to listen to it and they can see, oh, this is what we're doing. Yeah. You know? And well, it's almost uh, like you have to experience things before you can judge them. Well, no. I mean, people love to judge, you know, <laughs> and people love to, you know, they love to not have to sort it out for themselves. But, but again, I think that's up to us. You know, that'd be up to us to say, I understand where you're coming from. And I, and I think that's what makes it um, appealing to us too to work with her, that it would be. Yeah. Oh my God, what is it? It's, it's, it's interesting. Maybe interesting for the bad or good, but it's interesting. And so I think that, you know, would absolutely be the thing like, well, yeah, let's see what this is about. And then once we, you know, got to know her and became friends with her and started to make music, you know, all that doesn't, n- none of that would matter after a while. But right. And that initial thing of it, I still think it's it, it, less and less now would it start to sound, does it seem like a, a weird sentence to put the you know the flaming lips and molly cyrus together but in the beginning it was it was, well, I just it was think, fun i just think it's yeah. an interesting interesting approach to fandom where you know one type of fan really just sort of trusts what their fandom go hey you know right. if you like that and yeah, then yeah. another part is like i'm a fan but it, i need this to be exactly what well, yeah. i need it to I, be yeah i own you i yeah. own you yeah. and i own yeah you i know. made you yeah it doesn't mean that you have to like everything that an artist well, does but it, but at least if you're like if you're in it for the long term and go hey you know i trust th- i trust them i've built up this trust yeah. with them and you know well well I, I mean i like that they're intense you know and i most most um most listeners you know, by the time they get to be 25 or 26, they're, they're kind of done with music anyway. They're, there's music from when they were young and they like it and <laughs> whatever that was. But I, I always hold – and I think it's true that, 
you know, if, if you keep listening to music as you get older and you keep discovering new things, um, you could hate the, the Miley Cyrus and the Flaming Lips collaboration when you're 20. But if you keep listening to music by the time you're 30, you would absolutely love it. And sure. I think that could, that could really happen in someone's That's life. That's a really you know? interesting – yeah, because especially I think when you're young, there's a lot of identity seeking. There is. There is, yeah. And it's like, oh, I want to align with this. You but do. But I don't want to align with that. Exactly, yeah. And so, yeah. But I think that happens sometimes with older people too because it is – They do, yeah, yeah. Because it's very – it's like you said, you know, it's – yeah. You, you, it does require energy to allow new things to well, come in. Well, we know that because we've 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 covered records by Pink Floyd and 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 you know they're, they're especially the, the Dark Side of the Moon record. I mean, some of their audience holds that as like oh yeah, yeah. untouchable. You can't you know, kick do that. How dare Why you? would you? Yeah, and it's like. You know, I try to remind them. It's like you know, their music still exists untouched out yeah. there. It, it's still there. You can still go. <laughs> the government does not come in and take yeah. your existing yeah. Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, see, this isn't like I, someone taking your bicycle. If 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 they come in and take your bicycle, they have it and you don't. See, right. This isn't like that. Pink Floyd's music is untouched, still there, like it always was. <laughs> and this is over here. And if you don't want to have it, it doesn't matter. But they don't really like that. They like this. You know, I want to fight for my right. It's, you know, it's like sports or something. You know? But I think that's what's fun is being able to put different spins on things or well, to try things. Well, you do, things yes. And, yeah, you know. of course you do. Yeah. And, and yeah. It, you know, even yeah. if it doesn't work, it's like, hey, whatever. You tried something yeah. weird and fun because this is an art thing and it's a fun <laughs> thing to try. Like, <laughs> well, well, I know. I would, I would try to remind them. It's like, yeah, well, musicians like doing things like that. They yeah. like taking other people's music and ideas and seeing if they can put a little twist on it. Doesn't, yeah, it doesn't hurt anybody. And I know I, I always try to say like, you know, in the – in the list of crimes against humanity, this is not very, very important. Yeah, I know. Sometimes I see people get worked up about an entertainment thing now, and I go, you they know, yeah. there are really – listen, yeah. it's great that you love this thing, and it's great that you're passionate. However, there yeah. are some fucked up things there in the are, world that, that you could really yeah. get behind yeah, exactly. and, and try to change and <laughs> try to put really your energy into that. Really try yeah. to change yeah, that yeah. thing. But and, that's not what people really want to do. I mean I think that's why sports and weather – will never cease to be interesting to people. Sure. It's like they don't really have to do anything and they get to complain about it. Right, right, you know, Complaining right. without being involved is – that's definitely <laughs> – Humans? That is definitely a human – That is yeah. our fucking and, mutant power. Yeah, yeah. Is baseless complaining. Let me tell you how much I hate this, but I'm not going to do anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the truth – but the thing is I think a lot of that's just venting, you know, like because the other stuff is so bad – and they can't do anything about it. Maybe it's like, okay, well, I at least I I know about this one, you know, not life or death thing. Yeah, and, and I'm and, just going to get yeah. some of that out. And, now. and it bonds us all. Sure. You know? I mean, the you know the day after you know your your team wins or loses, you know, I mean, virtually everywhere you go, there's that we we have that together, even though we don't know right. each other or anything or or you know whether you know any of that stuff. It, it bonds us in that it way. It does yeah. prevent you. Yeah. <laughs> it really does prevent you. From ever really having to say to someone at a party, hey, who are you really? <laughs> what do you like? Like, what do you really like? You know, it's like, well, you but just, that's just uncomfortable. That... And that's uncomfortable for people. Of course. I mean, you know, no one, I mean, that, it's, it's not uncomfortable for you. I mean, at one time it was for me, but I've gotten to where um, I just don't give a fuck. Right. No, no, I'm kidding. No, no but, yeah, but, but, no. but, I, but I do think that's true, though. I think the older you get, it's not that, it's not a negative, like, you don't give a fuck. It's just like, Ah, it's just too much energy to to care about. Yeah, you know, to it's yeah. to maintain this this matrix of of you know. <laughs> oh, what does that think? And what's that person? And what if I did I say something? You know, it's well, like it's right. so much fucking energy. Well, I well I think you're lucky, and I think I'm lucky that we we've become less insecure about that stuff. Sure. Yeah, but I mean, but I I, I see where people they don't they don't like to not know what to say. I mean, I run into that all the time. I and. Especially even like being with Miley earlier today, you know, you run into people and they're, oh, oh my God, you're, you're Miley, and they don't know what to say, right? And she does because she's, you know, she's around it, you know, a million times a day, and so I think that's part of the deal, you know, and 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 I, I just don't think people like not knowing. They're, they get nervous. And of once course, you get nervous, everything is messed up. You right? Know what I mean, you get it's like, oh yeah. Well, it's, it's like getting stoned when you weren't ready for it. Or something. <laughs> You know, you're almost the same, but you're just not as smart as you want to be or as you know, I was very fortunate. You know, relaxed. I was very fortunate in college that I had a couple really bad experiences mm -hmm. with 
with weed that I yeah. just never did it again. No, see, we're the same like that. I talk about this all the time. It's like there are some people that can just smoke the most potent pot all the time and never – the worst it gets with them yeah. is they go, I'm really stoned. <laughs> but for me, I was like, do I need to go to the hospital? I'm, that's me. I'm dying. That's, no, that's me. I, 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 yeah, I would get anxiety. I would – everything would be magnified. <laughs> All the bad things would be All magnified. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah. But, but then real pot smokers go – Oh, you just got some. You, you didn't get good weed. Like, well, yeah, I don't. I'm just not gonna. I, I'm not gonna take the journey to find the good stuff. Okay. Well, I but I admire that they, they, they probably have some other disposition than we do. You know, I mean, I I probably worry too much about things that are never going to happen, and they probably don't worry enough about things that really are going to happen. And <laughs> you know, when they get stoned, it's like it's a wonderful world. You know, serial killers and all that. Who cares? You know. And when I get stoned, everybody. Is a little bit suspect. Everything could happen. Chaos really does rule, and then and I'm scared. And, and it doesn't work for me. You just yeah. ball up and wait. I just remember balling up and just waiting for it to pass. It and doesn't. Like- I know that that's the dilemma. I mean, it's it is funny because it seems like being stoned is uh, you know again it's not that serious. But once you're in that state of mind, you can't get out of it. No. Nothing you can do gets you out of it. You can't get drunk. You can't nope. exercise. You know, there's nothing you can do. You kind of just have to wait it out. Hopefully fall asleep and wake up <laughs> and you're back to normal. But it is. It's a, it, it for, yeah. And, and I didn't realize it when I was young, how many times I was getting like a contact high. Oh, I would be around my brothers and their friends and they're smoking some potent weed. And, and I, and I would often feel that way and knowing that, that I wasn't you know, what was this? It wasn't until I was older that I realized, oh, that's that's what that was. Pot's doing that to me. And yeah. That's so, funny. Yeah, yeah, I think it's probably been, I think 2002 maybe was the last yeah, yeah. time that a it happened. A long time ago now. Yeah. And it, I just don't. But you don't smoke it now. I don't do anything. So right, right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, and especially that. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I was younger, I mean, I did fear, you know, all the bad things that people would say about drugs and being around, um, a, you know, a lot of people, even in my family, becoming drug addicts and all that. It does kind of and, – and, and I think you're probably like me. You're just a worrier. You know, you just A hundred percent. Yeah. And I always just think, yeah, and, and, and this lapse into irresponsibility and what would happen to you and what damage would you do and all that. And that – if you're like that, you don't want to be taken. No. Five hits of LSD and <laughs> no, five God, hits of no. Molly and yeah, no. but people do. I know. Yeah, I was yeah. never I never <laughs> and I never did sh- I never really did anything other than weed and I used to drink a lot, but but the but I never did mushrooms either, and that's one where people are like, you know, it's weird at first, but you just gotta ride it out. And I go, <laughs> I would fucking before I, I would in the ride it out phase, I would fucking jump into traffic. Like well, there's it would not No, see I think you could you could probably now now your 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 Mind is probably mature enough that you could do a little bit and go, oh, okay. I think I'm. I just not, I think I know it's it. Not worth the risk. It's, I, it's, it's not well, worth the risk. It, I'll, I'll just stick with the Starbucks. <laughs> I'll stick with the Starbucks. But, but no, shrooms. see, we were talking about coffee earlier today as well. You know, coffee is a. It jacks you up, but it jacks you up in a very precise way. You know, and and I sometimes think um, it makes me mean. You know, it makes me aggressive. It, it makes me feel like. I'm right. Mm -hmm. And because I'm right, I get to kill you if I need to. Right. Because I'm right. And that's not, that's not worth it. You know, I want to get, I like that feeling of being very alert and awake, but it jacks up this one part of you. So yeah, it's still some awareness. I still can't drink. It's not, I don't go to Starbucks for coffee. It's, it's just their chai lattes. I can't actually drink regular. If I drank regular coffee, my anxiety level would be. Oh, I see. It'd be, it'd be like, you know, my fingernails would be peeling back as I'm scraping. Well, you are just, you're just wired. I am, but you said you're a worrier and that makes me wonder (laughs) if you think that. uh, I'm worried about you. I'm I'm fine. I'm totally fine. You should be worried about me if I'm drinking coffee or smoking (laughs) weed. Otherwise, was i'm fine but but do you think that um do you think that worry is a necessary component of of creation you know like it's because you're constantly trying to trying to express something no i mean i know i know you know there's a lot of folks out there that just um you know they just don't have that you know and they're they're creative and doing uh, cool things and they're not and i'm not always that way it's just I, I you know when i was younger i just I, I guess I had this desire to be grown up, you mm-hmm. know, and then I, th- I think I'm lucky that now that I'm – I realize I'm grown up, I think, oh, well, now I'm already grown up. I don't have to <laughs> try to be grown up and I think that allowed me to relax a little bit. Otherwise, I think you just become too much of a curmudgeon. Sure. You know? And that's no fun either and I, 
I do want to have fun with people. I do want to – I'm interested in what they're doing too. I don't want to just be like, you know, I know everything now. You know, I know that's it, tough. You know? you know, that curmudgeonism is such a <laughs> – it's, it's a real seductive I've path. Seen that. It's I've real seen seductive. that in people and I think that's why I, you know, I was like, I don't want to become like that or maybe I'm already like that or something. And so, yeah, and I don't, I don't think there's anything – inherently bad about occasionally being embarrassed or being wrong or being stupid or of any course of that, you know what i mean as long as you're not you know you're not you know trying to hurt somebody or, or something like that so i think i've loosened up on that and and i've tried to get more drunk and get more <laughs> fucked up here and there but it hasn't really worked that well you know but but i'm trying to be more fun i would try to be more fun well that's and good be more not so worried all the time that's good. Yeah, you know, and and there is a probably a quote that I saw of like, you know, all the things that you've worried about that have never happened. Of course. And, and then I'll be around people and I'm like, yeah, you know, right. Why should we worry about it? And I don't know. I'm mean, used to be on, on an airplane and to be taking off, and I'd be like, did you hear that sound? It doesn't sound good. And <laughs> most <laughs> and people are just like, dude, dude, wh wh what are you worried about? And, so you understand how how a plane runs? No, but I don't think that's a yeah, good. Yeah, exactly. You know? You're looking at the faces of the of the of the stewardesses and they're. Like they look worried. Is something going? You know. And I think after the ten thousandth time that I was on one, something just said, "I'm not going to worry about it." You Boy, know? you know what would be really interesting as an experiment? I, at first, I was thinking if you got to the end of your life and someone said, "Here's the number of hours you spent worrying about things," yes. and you go, yes. "Oh fuck, that was a lot of time." Well, I, th I would I would consider that. Yeah. I, I mean, would, I yeah. think I think a fun experiment might be for you or me or anyone listening is. Whenever you feel worry, like an irrational worry come on, if you're a worrier or anxious person, uh, write down – like make a logbook. Write down what you were worried about and the amount of time you spent on it. And then just after a month or three months or six months, add up all the time and then go, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. you'll see like – I spent three weeks yeah. worrying about, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever it was. Well, it, I mean, and, and part of it is you're trapped with your personality. You know, I mean, your personality is probably is, is, is <laughs> guiding know. you along Stop that. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> but, I, but I would say maybe there are things out there that can help you. And stop. Stop worrying so much. <laughs> it know? is a pattern, though. Like worry is is worry is just a it's a it's a pattern. It's well, a pattern. I think it's that just that fear that you'll yeah your responsibilities you'll let somebody down or you won't sure. you won't do the thing that was expected of you or something and yeah so I, I don't know I mean this this interview isn't going that well and I'm not that embarrassed yeah I about appreciate it. that about it I appreciate that that you stuck with it you know the whole time you know the whole time you you you, you wrote it out I just kept hoping you, you yeah you was, put I, you pushed through it like a I, bad I, weed I, trip. I, uh, yeah, and yeah. you've done a really good job, <laughs> smiling the whole time. Why she laughs once in a while. That's it. You know, I have to say, it's very hard to make Katie laugh. So when you do make her laugh, it's like a genuine. It's, well, I don't know. She's probably watching a movie or something over there. That's actually funny. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Fuck! I never thought about that this whole time. I might have been just taking credit for stuff that actually was not deserved. I'm still going to take the credit no matter what. Um, I loved your new album, by the way. Well, thank and you. That thank is you. definitely thank you. one. That you can listen to from start to finish. No, I mean, we, I made light of, the, of that, but I think that is a great, great thing. I mean, I, I absolutely love records like that. Did you put it on and it's not, it's not just songs. It's a mood. It's a feeling. Yes. It's pushing you into this thing and you can think of it as a story or you can think of it as just being connected, you know, that, that like someone's connected stuff, you know, and it doesn't just feel like, oh, it's just a song and whatever. But yeah, I, I love that. And then to know that other people are getting that same experience out of it, it's just, yeah, it's wonderful. So Thank do you, you. So when you're, when you're touring that album, it, is it, do you play it the way that it's laid out on? No, the, no, no. I mean, I mean, you know, part of us, you know, I think a while back started to just, you know, differentiate between the introverts that want to be in the studio and create music and all that sort of stuff and the extroverts that have to be on stage and say, hey, look at me. You know, yeah. here we are, you know. And I think everybody struggles with that. I mean, I think we probably – because we've been doing it for so long, have had a good long time of kind of the balance of what that that means – and I think we probably have it a little bit easier. I think it must be harder to be an extrovert and to wish to be an extrovert. I mean, an introvert. You right. Know what I mean, to whereas it's not that difficult to be an introvert and to face, you know, what what it, like the embarrassment or whatever it is about being, you know, the 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 the, the show off or whatever. So I think we've gotten better at that. But definitely, when we appear on stage, you know, we. 
maybe not all of us to the extent that I'm doing it, but I mean, we all take on the role of like, hello, no, we're here to entertain you. <laughs> and you're, you're drunk and fucked up, and we are going to help you through all of this tonight with songs that you know and love. And, you know, it's, it's absolutely that level. But and even whatever... the fact that you recognize that is, is nice because it's, again, it flies in the face of, of the term like, you know, we're an arty band. Because it's not just for you. You understand that you're creating a relationship. Well, right. And but that you're within there for that, too. entertainment can really be the great savior in the end. You right. know, it's, it's not it's not just throwaway. And and I think when do, I mean we I mean we look at it like we're we're servants. You know, we're here to serve you. You know, you came to this thing. We're doing this job, and we love doing the job. And it's and I think it really works in that way. And I think our music works better in that way. I don't think everybody's music probably does. I, you know, I think there's probably some people you want to go see them and they're absolutely in control and they don't give a fuck about you. I think when when we met Prince, um, the fact that we gave him some of our CDs, Scott, our manager, gave his bodyguard some of our CDs. You gave it oh, to Prince himself. I it to oh, there you go. Okay, so he, he hands them to Prince, who absolutely doesn't know who we are and doesn't care. Right. Which is even better. We go and watch him perform, and he's great, and he's insane, and he's so perfect or whatever. And at the end of the thing, he's given his CDs to the bodyguard or whatever, and the bodyguard comes up and says, Prince doesn't want these. <gasps> <laughs> no, no, what he said was Prince... <laughs> And hands it back. <laughs> and so I love that he re-gifted your CDs back to you. So, Prince, thanks you. For so this. I'm, I'm just saying. I just think every you know every artist has their way of of getting to you. And so I think it probably wouldn't have been as powerful if Prince would have said, oh, "I love you guys too. I'm a dork, You're like just like you." It's like, no, I'm not like you, and I don't even know who you are, and I wouldn't listen to you. I wouldn't watch you play. I wouldn't come to your house. You I mean, know, that's, just, I love the story you know. ends really hilariously. <laughs> although I was, I kind of thought I was going in the direction of. And a week later, we got a handwritten letter, and no, he said, "No, no, see that that would that would ruin the 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 princeism." Of but the he is kind there. of because uh, I knew someone who dated him a long time ago, and I was so fascinated by that concept. I mean, like probably like twenty five years ago, and uh, and I said, "So." You can't just talk to him like a normal person, right? Like you can't say, "Hey, I'm going to run to McDonald's, Prince. You want to have some fries or something?" You know. And she said, "You're not allowed to address him first. He has well, to talk to you first. And I was like, "Oh, wow! Even if you're dating him, you got to do that." Wow. Yeah. So he definitely had a very altered wow. reality. Yeah. I mean, and uh, you know, like not having to date him, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> I just think if you, if you were going down to McDonald's for him after a while, it'd be annoying. But uh, <laughs> no, but, I mean, that, that, that's the way he chose to present his ideas and his stuff. I think that's amazing. So, I mean, I'm saying for us, I don't think it would work. I think the no. idea that we're like, look, we're here to, you know, we're here. We're so glad to be part of this experience with you. And I think our music probably penetrates and has more power coming from you know that that side of our personality, and or maybe we tried it the other way, and that just didn't work. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> it feels like know? it's just not a part of who you are, right? You know, and I think that's that's the probably the hardest part of. You know, it's not you know it's not that you're just doing music. You know, you have to be this entity that presents it, and and I think we always sort of felt like, well, we're just normal dorks, and we're lucky that we get to make this music. But I think that in and of itself becomes a character. You know, sure. you, you get to be that that person. And I think we just were very lucky that that being true to ourselves and being, you know, just being ourselves, you know, you're just lucky that that works. Because if it doesn't, what do you do? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I guess you, <laughs> that's a great question. Well, I don't know. You keep trying things and hope, but yeah, you know, and, and so, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, most of it is just it's just dumb luck. Like we said earlier, it's just dumb luck that any of it comes together and works and seems to last and I mean I think it's yeah. less luck than you might think. I mean I do think there are subconscious forces at play sort of like you were saying before but 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 the idea that you do make choices along the way that maybe you don't think about and you go oh, I guess we got lucky but it's like but you made cho you set the table for the luck to pay. It's like you well, I, I yeah. do, I believe in yeah. a lot of cases you do make your own luck for most for the most part. Well, I, I think when you're always 
doing what we call the work or whatever it right. is that you're doing, you know, which sounds boring. You know, you don't want it to be work, but it is. I think that's really the thing it is. You're, you're just doing it, doing it, doing it. Yeah, and you, if you weren't doing it all the time, you wouldn't know what luck, the luck was. Right. It would happen and, or not happen and you wouldn't be aware of it. But when you're doing it all the time and something happens and you can take advantage of it or, or go away from it or be resilient to it if it's bad – bad things happen. I think that's probably the best thing that happens is you're moving along and bad things happen and you can just get through it. It yeah. doesn't destroy all your your belief and your momentum and your, you know, what you thought you were about or something. So it's probably more that. And then the longer you do it, there probably is some you know, internal mechanism that just whatever you're doing, you'll probably just keep doing it, you know. Um we were watching accidentally watching this show called My 600-Pound Life. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And that has to be true. Well, I just started eating another candy bar that day. Right. And then two weeks later, I ate four candy bars. Right. And <laughs> right. Now I eat 35 of them in right. an hour. You know, it's right. just something must be part of our thing of just, well, we just – we just keep going. We just keep going. Yeah. We just we, you start making choices and you keep going down. The, yeah, down for path. better or for worse. But are, um, yeah. are you playing Los Angeles soon? I know your tour is. Start. We're playing tonight. <gasps> yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> where, where We're not playing? playing right now. I mean, it's later tonight. Is yeah. this? Yeah. This isn't the concert right now. That's crazy. This could be the. This concert. This could be the concert. Yeah. Where are you guys yeah. playing? Where are you playing? We're playing at the Ace the Ace Hotel. Oh Theater. wow, that's it awesome. is an insanely well preserved, very. You know, freaky, arty uh, theater in there. It's, it's. I don't know how it stayed so, so great looking. And you go in there, and you don't really even need to do anything. You just stand in there and look at the theater. It's oh, just, that's really yeah, cool. It is. It's just this beautiful old theater. Yeah, that's fantastic. And then, uh, I, I'm sure. I don't know what the theme of the theater was when they when they made it. I mean, it looks like it's old, like drippy and elaborate, and, and glass everywhere, and it's it's it seems hazardous. That the flaming lips are actually playing there, you know. But um, I think we've given them our word that we're not going to destroy anything. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, our that's fans good. Fans won't won't do anything. Maybe to just it, one but, little thing, you know, just to just to remind them that you were there. Damn! Don't even don't get us started. No, it's um it's wonderful. So yeah, we're we're playing there. Yeah, yeah. and please, to, and I, I'm sure you get this question a ton because the album is is a Polish phrase. It is, but people don't don't have to know that it i mean i think it most people say it the way that it looks if you can if you, the the title on the record is kind of you know drippy looking or whatever but it's called i call it oxymelody is that what you were getting at i, yeah, I just yeah. i put the stress on the different i, I was calling it oxymelody but right. but, but melody i like i like yeah. it better well melody yeah it's like it's, it's like melody but it just doesn't have the e doesn't it. have it's, the e in it melody yeah. yeah and and i you know we struggle with titles as as everybody does. It's like, what do you call these things? You know, and if you don't already have, you know, some wonderful, you know, accident that's happened that allows it to be an obvious title, you do, you know, you struggle with what do, what do we call this stuff? And I think when we came up, when we started to settle on that being at least one of the titles that uh, of a, of one of the songs and then thinking maybe the album could be called that, sometimes that really helps you. It, I mean, I always sort of feel like you have to make – some decision, and then you can decide whether it's good or bad. But to sit there in the stew of trying to make twenty decisions and never make them, nothing ever happens. And so sometimes uh, I'll just sort of announce, you know, as we're getting into making a record, here's what we're going to call it, <laughs> and we can change our minds if we want to or whatever. But we just start, and that sometimes will will mold it into being this thing that really does sound like that title works. I I remember even for. Um, a record called Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. I mean, we were moving along making a record, and then we started to title it Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. And and the last three or four songs came together and sounded exactly like that record. But they none of it did until then. And sometimes I think that's just you know that's what you have to do. You, it starts to seem like something, and then that helps you. You know, it, I mean, it's all abstract anyway. But you know, for me, I start to connect. Oh, it sounds like it's yeah. But that's, that's what's yeah. great though, because it it's rather than rather than kind of wallowing in the decision making process, you just make a decision. But as long as you can say, you know, if we change our minds later, fine. Let's just say this well, now, right, and right. then that way it just yeah. cuts out all of the second guessing. Well, there's, I always say it, it's the power of the decisive mind. You know, there, your mind is here saying, "Yeah, whatever you want to do, man, I'll help you. I'll help you." But just you have to decide. And once you decide, it can it can say, "Well, okay, let's really look at what you're doing now." And I know this is true because 
about 10 years ago, I was Christmas shopping. And I have a, have a list, you know, and, you know, it gets to be close to Christmas. You just make a list, and it's like, it's like 300 people. And I've not, we've not bought one thing for anybody, you know. And we went into the store, and we, you know, we're going around. It's one of these knick-knack sort of stores where you buy this sort of useless junk. <laughs> All the stuff yeah. that I have here, yeah. <laughs> that you could buy for anybody. For anybody. Know? And we're in there in an hour. We don't get anywhere, you know. And we go back, and it's like, we got to start to get stuff. And we buy, like, one thing. We decide for one person that we're going to get. And suddenly we bought 20 things. We left the store. We didn't even get to the, to the car, and we thought, no, let's go back in. And before we knew it, well, we bought, like, Almost everybody's stuff at that one thing. And it just helped us say, you know, let's just start to do it. Let's start. And once you start, it does. It helps you. And it takes the, all the other decisions away. And it, it helps you relax. And like you said, you can change your mind. It's not that big of a deal unless you're embarrassed about it or you made too much of a fuss about it. But, you know, we do that all the time now. You just say it's going to be this. And then if you walked in to the studio a week later, you'd be like, well, what happened to that? Be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's not that anymore. I didn't like it as much after a while. You know, and you, <laughs> and you can deal. just do that. It's just a song. It's just, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And we do that all the time. Sometimes we change our mind five or six times and say, well, here it is. Yeah, you know, and you don't know when it's right. Who knows? I mean, there's, there's some kind of you know, lie about art that you just intuitively know. It's like, no, you don't, you don't know anything. You know, you just hope that something happens and you hear it as if someone else was doing it instead of you doing it. Because when you know you're doing it, it just doesn't feel it, – it, I mean, it, it doesn't surprise you. It's like scratching your own head. Yeah. If someone else scratches your head, it feels absolutely wonderful. <laughs> And it's the same thing. It, when you scratch it, your own head, you just feel like a well, chimp. No, it feels pretty good. Yeah. It's better than nothing. But, I mean, when someone else does it, it's like they could just do it all day. Yeah. And, it's, and I don't know why. It's, it's, it's virtually the same thing. But you – it's not a surprise to you. It's not, a, it's, it's not nuanced. You know what you're doing. And it's the same thing. So, you know, I try to arrive at all art in that same way. It's like even though I'm – you know, doing a lot of it, I want it to be put into someone else's hand, and I want that to be what I'm affected. Yes, by. exactly, yeah. because mm -hmm. you're you're essentially you're bringing your half to the table, which is the thing, and the audience is bringing their baggage and emotional stuff that <laughs> fill in the gaps and help you know complete the story. Well, that well, all, all music I think is made. I mean, that's why music can be so powerful. It's like there's the music and then there's what your life and what you bring to it. And that, right. that can make it the greatest thing ever. I mean, it really is just a song. But what you think it is, you know, in art and music, it, it is that. I mean, a lot of things, that's not true. But if you think it's the best song ever, then it is. It, that's, that's, you know, no one can come up to you, you know, and tell you, you know, that song that you like, it's not any good. It's like <laughs> if you like it. It's good. It's, it's good, good. to do. Yeah. And if you don't like it, no one can come up to you and say, well, that song that you hate, you know, it's really good. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's like food. You know, if you don't like it, it doesn't really matter if someone is saying, well, this is a five-star restaurant or you know, whatever. It's like, well, I don't like it. And it's true <laughs> for that. But some things This in isn't life, a long John but, Silvers. But some things in life aren't like that. And they, we have to decide, oh, well, this is good and this is bad, but, you know, but with art and food. You get to decide. You get, you get to be in control. <laughs> you get to be the critic. Well, I hope you do this Long John Silver's promotion. I think it'd be great. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Just waiting yeah. to happen. Um, and uh, good luck on the show tonight. Well, have, a, have a great time. I think it's going it's to be marvelous. Yeah. And, and thank yeah, you yeah. so much for coming. It's such a pleasure yeah. to meet you. We, we, this is like a, a little bit of therapy session for both of us. It is a little bit, yes. Yeah. I'd, more away. for you, I felt like, though, really. Mm, well, I, you know, there were a couple times where I thought, <laughs> oh, I think Wayne's getting a little teary now. I was the whole time. Yeah, the entire yeah. – he might be yeah. on the edge of a real breakthrough. Yeah. Right now. No. This no, is it. No, no, no. Now? Yeah, Wait, no. is it now? No, I didn't feel, I didn't feel too teary. No. no I, more fun. Like, okay, yeah, good. Yeah, we good, were good, laughing, good. laughing together. Good. Well, yeah. I, you know, maybe we're running together. Your enthusiasm is, is contagious. Well, yours I mean, is, is too, to though. Me. It's not to them. I mean, no, 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 no. He's on, on his phone. Phones. Yeah, they're on He's their phones. thinking about the Long John Silver's yeah. deal and how that's yeah. going to pay off He's thinking about his at some point. And Prince. He's looking at where he's going to get some shoes. I'm just going to feel like you have to frame the CD that was given. 
I'm so glad to hear that you saved it. It's, it's in that is fantastic. And you just make a plaque underneath that says, Prince thanks you for this. And just put the CD in. I have a little sticky note on the back that says, Prince touched this. That is fantastic. How else would you know? Because it's just the CD. It's not make a song. plaque. Get it no, engraved. I, I, I know. It's I know. time. We could probably do some forensics. If we had to, and know that that's his fingerprints or something. And clone him? He probably wore gloves, though. You know, he probably is like, no, man. It's very possible you know, he might not have touched you anything. You can't have... You're not allowed. You can't have access to any of my DNA or anything. He might have, he yeah. he might have showered in a purple jumpsuit. I don't know. I mean, maybe, he was, maybe he was a never nude. But, I mean, that being said, I mean, we did absolutely feel honored to be just in the room with him. <laughs> of course. And that's a great thing. He is just a man. You know what I mean? But you but fill that, in the story, though. Yeah. But the, all that, that thrill and excitement and that nervousness and everything, he's, the, he's made that. And that's a, that's a great, great, great creation to say it's just his presence is – is cool. Well, I, that's you know. true, but I do like that you're approachable. <laughs> that's nice. That's well, nice yeah. that you're approachable. We probably tried to be more like Prince. It just didn't work It just well. didn't work. Yeah. So didn't work too much. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. Well, I also appreciate your enthusiasm, and I love that you uh, – I love that you're sincere and earnest and just and, – and it doesn't really seem like – you like stuff that you like, and you don't like stuff you don't like. And there's, but there's no like pretense behind it. It's just, uh, and maybe that's a Midwest thing too. Maybe that's kind of a Midwest thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just that we're older, and it just, yeah, it just I, doesn't I, matter I anymore. Know. Or it's just, yeah, it's just more fun to not be so, um, so intense about it. Yeah, yeah. intensity it can be a great thing, but it can also be like. Yeah, in moderate in doses, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. So, but maybe, all the time, maybe I'm I'm learning a little bit of that. Yeah, from you. Maybe I'm learning that from you. Listen, yeah. if anyone learned anything from me, I would feel like uh, I would be surprised. <laughs> but then I would also feel uh, like it was all it was all worth it up to this moment. If someone could take well, away, well, no. Something. But you saying even that stuff you said about smoking pot, a lot of people, you know, feel embarrassed. Like, oh, I don't. For some reason, it doesn't work for me. But the more you say it, the more it invites the other person to. Be like, oh, I know, I know what you mean. By yeah, yeah, I just don't, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 you know, for someone who was very afraid when I was younger about fitting in and not fitting in, I feel like now the older guy, like, well, I, this, I, this is it. What do you want? You know, it's like <laughs> this is it. This is what it is. So this is who I am, and you know. But uh, but I, I really wish I could fucking go to the show tonight. I didn't know it was tonight. I know. No, it's 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 too crowded already. You I, shouldn't come. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen, I, I accept your invitation, not, Wayne. Because then if we have to invite everybody around, it's like, now, yeah, there's, there's just not enough room. At no, this point. Katie's <laughs> watching a movie. She's not even paying attention to this. She's not going to know. She's not going to have any idea. But I really would love to see you live at some point soon. Maybe if there's a... Uh, we'll come back. We're doing dates with Mac. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, fantastic! We'll, we'll do more, yeah. I would and, love and, to, and we'll we'll include you in the loop. Please do, yeah. please, please, yeah. please, please, please yeah. do. It was yeah. an absolute yeah. pleasure to meet yeah. you. Well, you too. Um, yes. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. Um, Oxy Melody is the album and yeah. the tour that's coming up that is now in progress and coming up U.S. Yeah. and Europe. Yeah. And uh, the and world. We call it the whole the Earth, world Earth tour. The whole yeah. Earth tour. Yeah. And uh, because we would someday we should it would be great to tour in outer space and the moon and all the other galaxies. Zero Wouldn't gravity. It? Someday, no, no. I mean, but but we're in your like your Star Wars. Yeah. Um, um, you, although I will say this: in space, no one can hear you shred because there's no atmosphere to, co- to collect the sound waves. Well, that's if you're like in in space with no helmet or oxygen or anything. Right. We would be in a room. Oh, in, I see. Okay, in, that makes in, more sense. In like a spaceship or something where we could play music. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, like it's this. It's not just going to be in. You'll be open, in the out in open frozen. Space. You'll be in the Long John Silver station, <laughs> space station. I feel like there's going to be a – He's reminding me. No one can hear you in space. Been, don't, don't mess this up. There's going to be a space station somewhere and there will be fast food on that space station when people yeah. start populating. It'll be yeah. just like a food court, a because space it's, food court. Yeah, we, and, and we'd know um, that's not healthy but it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. Fuck it. You're in space. Who cares? Uh, but I like – but you have to remember the idea was it was fast. Very fast. Yeah, and there was just no time to make this kind of No time to make a pot roast yeah. or catch a fish and skin it. And It's like they just like right See, there. See, we were remarking the other day of how the world's changed now. It's like it used to be you left the house for entertainment, but you cooked at home. <laughs> only made oh, my sense. God, you're right. But nowadays it's like you won't cook anything at home. It's like we go out to eat and everything entertainment we just have right there. We wouldn't dare go. That to is a theater. fantastic point you know, that I never thought. I have not thought of. Yeah, there's more restaurants than ever, and yet they're all still here. We're lazy when it comes to everything but food. 
<laughs> we're lazy about it. Well, everything no, we're else. lazy because we don't want to make it. We don't want to go shopping. We don't want to cook it. We don't want to clean up. We don't want to do the dishes. We don't want to do anything. We want to give you five dollars, and you'll do everything, and we'll just we'll just eat it. Go home and watch more Netflix. I am often fascinated by the idea that we just eat whatever someone brings to us without any question as well, to. Yeah. You know, so what? you're worried again. Oh, I'm yeah. not really. Wor- yeah, I know. But you know, no, but I'll I mean, still do it. You mean, you mean like Postmates or something like, like that? Like Postmates or something, where yeah. it's like, hey, I don't really know any of these people. They're well, just I bringing know. something. You know, like the guy. Well, but what would they do to? It? We had Postmates delivered yesterday, and someone said that to us. And we we're like, you know, why would they care? <laughs> I know, I See, know. I'm like, we're just another useless customer. Maybe on their some list guy's mad at Postmates and he wants to like just uh, just right. like drop a turd in no, a bag I, and I not know. tell you about it and go, here's your chow mein. But wouldn't like, oh, you is- know it's a turd or would you just eat it thinking, man, that, that looks like a turd, but I, I think I'm going to eat it. I feel like it would take me like <laughs> six or seven bites, like three bites in. This might be a turd. Nom, 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 nom. God, I'm still not sure. No. I mean, I, I, I that that probably will happen now that you've you know. Talked unfortunately, about it. I, yeah. unfortunately, I I, I, yeah. I inherited a, a weird thing about food from my dad, where I'll just eat stuff really without really. My dad was at a, my one of my favorite dad stories is we were at a Cracker Barrel once and a fly <laughs> landed in his grits and he fucking just ate around it while the thing struggled. To gain freedom, he just ate in a moat around a grit moat around the fucking Cause, fly. Because he's because he's a manly man, <laughs> and, and manly men have been eating around you know the the dead insects for centuries. <laughs> it was alive. Back. He ate around the thing that was alive. It was like a fucking art piece. By the time he was done, that's with it. amazing. It really was. Did he did he make a stink of it, or is it like no. hey, I'm just I'm just hungry? And that's exactly yeah. what it was. He was like, what am I going to do? Not eat it? Yes, yeah. you're not going to. You shouldn't. But wow. he didn't care. He goes, I ate around it. That was his justification. Wow. Yeah. And that fly died the most the, – the weirdest death of any any creature. Looking up at your, your My dad. hungry dad. Yeah. yeah. The fly yeah. must have thought, oh, this is a predator. I'm going to be – but it's just like, <laughs> oh, I see. He's just going to consume the vicinity around me. He's going to eat the neighborhood and then just leave me where I am. So, so you're, you're – the thing that you carry with you now is that you would eat the fly or you would eat around the fly or you wouldn't. I, I guess I'm confused. I would the, the free the fly, but I would eat around the area where he landed. I would free him. But you wouldn't just say, I can't eat that. A fly touched it. No. No, I wouldn't do that. I mean, if you're at a barbecue outside, I mean, there's, there's, there's there, everything lands on your food. Of course. You just eat it. Yeah. Yeah. Who it, cares? If, if you knew everything that was in your food, you'd never eat anything. So it's just better to not yeah, care or cares? know. There's yeah. just no energy. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Well, all, right. all right. Well, that was a good ending. That was a good landing yeah. point. Yeah. We landed in the middle of this podcast grit. <laughs> And now we're struggling to break free. <laughs> we're so we're going to eat around. We're, around. we're going to eat yeah. around the fly. Yeah. yeah. And so I, normally I say – There is a great metaphor in there. I'll figure it out on, uh, as soon as we leave. Yeah. Well, normally I say, well, you know what it is? Maybe it's, maybe it's just uh, uh, w- worry about what you can control. You can't control the fly, but you can eat around it. So maybe – normally we say enjoy your burrito to end the podcast, which means enjoy your present as it's happening. But maybe today we'll just say eat around the fly. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But I like how, how much of an impact that had on you. You watched th- this or you were there with him. Yeah. Thinking, why don't you just kill it? Why, yeah. don't, why no. don't you just eat it? Or, or he or he was the whole just very A to B. It was very practical. You know, I'm hungry. I want these grits. I don't want to <laughs> send it back. You know, all, this whole th- thought process happened in a millisecond. Well, I'm just saying if you're doing that at home and a fly lands at home, you just eat it. There's no one to send it back to. And no. So he's probably thinking, well, Cracker Barrel, my house, who cares? It's it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. See, that, I would be that same way. I'd, I would understand. I would absolutely. Because I put in my time at Long John Silver's. <laughs> you understand yeah. how shit works, my friend. Yeah. yeah. See, you're just out there getting the food. I'm back here slaving away, making it with the In fly, a pirate costume. And, yeah, everything, all the, all the elements. Yeah, and a, and a you're a swashbuckling totally, and some flies are going to get in the <laughs> they're going to get in in the in the in the grits here. You're going to tell yeah. me that pirates didn't eat a few nasty see, things that, when they were the out metaphor. at sea. That's the metaphor. Some flies are going to get in the grits, you and you're going to gonna eat, around eat around them. them. Yeah. Eat around them. That's that's a good way to look at life. Done. Yeah, we did it. Nice. Now leaving nerdist.com. Enjoy your burrito. <laughs> It seems like being stoned is, uh, you know, again, it's not that serious. But once you're in that 
state of mind. You can't get out of it. No. Nothing you can do gets you out of it. You can't get drunk. You can't nope. exercise. You know, there's nothing you can do. You kind of just have to wait it out. Hopefully, fall asleep and wake up, <laughs> and you're back to normal. But it is. It's a. It, it for yeah. And and I didn't realize it when I was young. How many times I was getting like a contact high. Oh, I would of be course. around my brothers and their friends, and they're smoking some potent weed. And and I and I would often feel that way, and knowing that, that I wasn't. You know, what was this? It wasn't until I was older that I realized, oh, that's that's what that was. Pot's doing that to me. And yeah, that's so, funny. Yeah, yeah, I think it's probably been I think 2002 maybe was the last yeah, yeah. time that it happened. Time ago now, and yeah. it, I just don't. But you don't smoke it now. I don't do anything. So right, right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it, especially that. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I was younger, I mean, I did fear, you know, all the bad things that people would say about drugs and being around, um, a, you know, a lot of people, even in my family, becoming drug addicts and all that. It does kind of and, – and, and I think you're probably like me. You're just a worrier. You know, you just A hundred percent. Yeah. And I always just think, yeah, and, and, and this lapse into irresponsibility and what would happen to you and what damage would you do and all that. And that – if you're like that, you don't want to be taken. No. Five hits of LSD and <laughs> no. five God, hits no. of Molly. And yeah, no. but people do. I know. Yeah. I was yeah. never, I never, <laughs> and I never did, sh- I never really did anything other than weed and I used to drink a lot, but, but the, but I never did mushrooms either. And that's one where people are like, you know, it's weird at first, but you just got to ride it out. And I go, <laughs> I would fucking, before, I, I would, in the ride it out phase, I would fucking jump into traffic. Like well, there's, it would not. No, see, I think you could, you could probably now, now you're, 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 Mind is probably mature enough that you could do a little bit and go, oh, okay. I think I'm. I just. Not, I think I know it's it. Not worth the risk. It's, I, it's, it's not well, worth the risk. It, I'll, I'll just stick with the Starbucks. <laughs> I'll stick with the Starbucks. But, but no, shrooms. see, we were talking about coffee earlier today as well. You know, coffee is a. It jacks you up, but it jacks you up in a very precise way. You know, and and I sometimes think um, it makes me mean. You know, it makes me aggressive. It, it makes me feel like. I'm right, mm-hmm. and I'm, because I'm right, I get to kill you if I need to. Right, because of I'm right, and that's not that's not worth it. You know, I want to get. I like that feeling of being very alert and awake, but it jacks up this one part of you. So yeah, it's still some awareness. You know? I still can't drink. It's not. I don't go to Starbucks for coffee. It's it's just their chai lattes. I can't actually drink regular. If I drank regular coffee, wow, my anxiety level would be. Oh, I see. It'd be it'd be like you know, like my fingernails would be peeling back as I'm wow. scraping. Wow. Well, the... you are just you're just wired. I am. But good. you said you're a worrier, and that makes me wonder <laughs> if you think that. Uh, I'm worried about you. I'm I'm yeah. fine. I'm totally yeah. fine. You, should we worry about me if I'm drinking. Coffee or smoking weed. Otherwise, I'm fine. But but do you think that um, do you think that worry is a necessary component? And then there'd be this middle audience that's just old enough and young enough to know who she is and probably know her from more than Hannah Montana than anything else. Right. And would think, oh my God, this is uh, why is this? You know, or the flame the flame is trying to go, you know, in, in this commercial way or this Walt Disney world. What is this? And they're probably the the ones that were the most confused and the most anti uh, Miley Flaming Lips, you know. And then you've got you know the segment that's young that kind of knows Miley from being more of like the twerking and stuff like right. that than from anything else, and they think it's it's fun and radical. Yeah. And so you know, so there's you know the old people that don't know they love it, and the young people that do know they love it. There's that area in the middle, <laughs> and I can understand that. You know, I can understand if you. You know, if you grew up in that time where, you know, you you loved your music and yet you were kind of assailed by the popularity of something like a, a, a you know, like Miley, you know, you might be annoyed that why are, you know, why are these guys now joining forces with her? And I think I'm probably more in the old person category where I wouldn't really know that much about her other than the little bits of it that I thought were interesting sure. starting in 2013. And now as I go back, I get more of an, you know, an idea of what, you know, some of the world thinks of her. So it would be, it would be kind of a, a crossover of, of all that. Yeah. But I think it all gets a little less, um, intense, um, the bad part of it anyway, once we made the record with her and people get to listen to it and they can see, oh, this is what we're doing. Yeah. You know? And well, it's almost uh, like you have to experience things before you can judge them. Well, no. I mean, people love to judge, you know, <laughs> people love to, you know, they love to not have to sort it out for themselves. But, 
But again, I think that's up to us. You know, that'd be up to us to say, I understand where you're coming from. And I, and I think that's what makes it um, appealing to us too, to work with her, that it would be, yeah. oh my God, what is it? It's, it's, it's interesting. It Maybe interesting for the bad or good, but it's interesting. And so I think that, you know, would absolutely be the thing like, well, yeah, let's see what this is about. And then once we you know, got to know her and became friends with her and started to make music, you know, all that doesn't, n- none of that would matter after a while. But right. in that initial thing of it, I still think it's it, it, less and less now would it start to sound, does it seem like a, a weird sentence to put the, you know, the Flaming Lips and Molly Cyrus together. But in the beginning, it was, it was, well, I just it was think, fun. I just think it's yeah. an interesting, interesting approach to fandom where, you know, one type of fan really just sort of trusts what they're a fan of. Go, hey, you know, right. if you like that. And yeah, then another yeah. part is like, I'm a fan, but it, I need this to be exactly what well, I yeah. need it to I, be. Yeah, I own you. I yeah. own you yeah. and I own Yeah, you I know. made you. It yeah. doesn't mean that you have to like everything that an artist well, does, but, I, it, but it, like make a logbook, write down what you were worried about and the amount of time you spent on it. And then just after a month or three months or six months, add up all the time and then go, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. you'll see like, I spent three weeks yeah. worrying about, yeah, you know, yeah. whatever it was. Well, it, I mean, and, and part of it is you're trapped with your personality. You know, I mean, your personality is probably is, is, is <laughs> guiding know. you along Stop that. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> but, I, but I would say maybe there are things out there that can help you. And stop. Stop worrying so much. <laughs> it know? is a pattern, though. Like worry is is worry is just a, it's a it's a pattern. It's well, a I think it's that just that fear that you'll yeah your responsibilities you'll let somebody down or you won't sure. you won't do the thing that was expected of you or something and yeah so I, I don't know I mean this this interview isn't going that well and I'm not that embarrassed yeah I about appreciate it. that about it I appreciate that that you stuck with it you know the whole time you know the whole time you you you, you wrote it out I just kept hoping you, you yeah you I was, put I, you pushed through it like a I, bad I, weed I, trip. I, uh, yeah, and yeah. you've done a really good job, <laughs> smiling the whole time. I she laughs once in a while. That's it. You know, I have to say, it's very hard to make Katie laugh. So when you do make her laugh, it's like a genuine. It's... Well, I don't know. She's probably watching a movie or something over there. That's actually funny. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Fuck! I never thought about that this whole time. I might have been just taking credit for stuff that actually was not deserved. I'm still going to take the credit no matter what. Um, I loved your new album, by the way. Well, thank and you. That thank is you. definitely thank you. one. That you can listen to from start to finish. No, I mean, we, I made light of, the, of that, but I think that is a great, great thing. I mean, I, I absolutely love records like that. Did you put it on and it's not, it's not just songs. It's a mood. It's a feeling. It's yes. pushing you into this thing and you can think of it as a story or you can think of it as just being connected, you know, that, that like someone's connected stuff, you know, and it doesn't just feel like, oh, it's just a song and whatever. But yeah, I, I love that. And then to know that other people are getting that same experience out of it, it's just, yeah, it's wonderful. So Thank do you, you. So when you're, when you're touring that album, it, is it, do you play it the way that it's laid out on? No, the, no, no. I mean, I mean, you know, part of us, you know, I think a while back started to just, you know, differentiate between the introverts that want to be in the studio and create music and all that sort of stuff and the extroverts that have to be on stage and say, hey, look at me. You know, yeah. here we are, you know, and I think everybody struggles with that. I mean, I think we probably because we've been doing it for so long, have had a good long time of kind of the balance of what that that means. And I think we probably have it a little bit easier. I think it must be harder to be an extrovert and to wish to be an extrovert. I mean, an introvert. You right. I mean, to whereas it's not that difficult to be an introvert and to face, you know, what what it, like the embarrassment or whatever it is about being, you know, the 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 the, the show off or whatever. So I think we've gotten better at that. But of what you would think of as English fish and chips. Well, when I, yeah. I I was born in Kentucky and I grew up in Memphis and we had. We had those there. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, uh, a Midwest thing, sort of, yeah. And it, and I can't imagine that – when I look back – when I think back about eating it now because I, I used to eat – I used to like to really eat all the extra crunchy bits. Oh, exa- no, exactly. That's, those are crumblies. That's, I mean, people would come in and order just that. Did yeah. you sell – you would sell those? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. And, and every – yeah, that – I mean, that's that was what part of the secret oh of all God. that. Talk yeah. about Talk about, like, diarrhea No, and it is making. good, and it is absolutely good. I mean, it's a, it's a great – Eating experience, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's I mean, it's just grease and, and <laughs> very it's little all the fish. And, things that are the worst yeah, things that yeah. you should, that you should have. And it was, you know, I think at, at, at the, at the time it still felt like there, there was a lot of people that were eating fish 
on Fridays, right? Is that a – is that – that's like a religious you – know, Is that a Catholic thing? Yeah, something about, you know – and so Fridays would be especially, you know, hectic, busy, busy days. And to think of like that – Eating the fish was supposed to be some sort of sacrifice that you're making. I thought, right? Not right? eating red meat. I think, yeah, something like you know, we're, well, you know, we're 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 aware of of, of our indulgences or something. I, I don't know, but l- l- this fish at Long John Silver's. I mean, there's so little fish in there. This great greasy mm-hmm. bunch of batter and and the French fries and all that, and the hush puppies. Oh, know? the hush puppies yeah, too. Yeah. I mean, and the coleslaw. Everything about it was just an outrageously, um, you know, the 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 coleslaw with its with its dressing and all that it's just amazing yeah and i worked there for a long long time and i and i loved it i mean i loved you know the food and i loved working there and you know had a lot of great experiences but never i didn't realize that how unhealthy <laughs> it really was you know i, love I mean i think re- back then everything there wasn't that much you know this was, i started there in 1977 so long long time ago back you know at the when 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 uh, fast food was just people didn't really worry about no it health. was just faster than other food it was faster yeah, yeah. and <laughs> and fattier and more delicious and you could get it into your body quicker but I love the yeah. idea that 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 was that there's a religious movement behind Long John Silver's like. Did 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 the Lord say go forth and let your John Silvers be long? Was there some sort of a well, yeah. religious? Yeah, I know. I remember that. And then then, then during <laughs> is it Lent? Is that is that is that? That's around the yeah. Easter time. That's before you got to give up the. Yeah, and we would be especially busy then. Yeah, I never connected it that much, but I remember you know from just you know working there every year, you'd be like, oh yeah, that's. I'm that, surprised. That. Is Long John Silver still around? It is still it around. Is, I see, but I, see I, the but I see it now. It, it's like it's connected to like you know a, a Kentucky Fried Chicken and an A and W and a Long John Silver's. They'll all be in the same thing. I'm know? surprised yeah. there's not some sort. I'm surprised they haven't approached you and said, "Let's do a you know, sure. to be a touring to go out on tour and do all that and still get your eighty dollars a week from Long John Silver's." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> but I think it really, it really, it, it really worked for me, you know, because I didn't want to. I didn't really want a serious job that took you know a lot a lot of time and a lot of responsibility. Um, with that, I probably wouldn't have been very good at it anyway. And this was the type of job that within the first two weeks you've got this thing. You know, it's a it's a it's it's kind of mindless work in a way once you know you know the routines of it. And yeah, I, I it, it really worked for me because it I, you know it it made me enough uh, money that I could sort of live. And a pirate costume. It, well, yeah, you know, yeah, year yeah. round, you could you could be <laughs> I mean, a pirate. Funny now, I do I do occasionally wear an eye patch on stage. <laughs> but I, yeah. shout out to your roots. Well, I, it, it and plus it just looks cool on an old guy. You know, to, <laughs> <laughs> you, know you just look tougher or something. But yeah, I, I think it's funny how all those things they do connect. You know, it's like. That's the that's the wonder of the subconscious. You know, you think it's you doing it with your with your conscious mind up here, and there's all these things working below the surface that you just get to have for yeah, better or for worse. But I, I also yeah. I also love that you know because you referred to your to your band as like oh we're this arty band and we got this mainstream thing. But I love that you're not snobby about any of it. Where you're like, hey, that's kind of cool. Like you embrace. You well, know, you seem very positive about everything, and not like not. And when I hear arty band, I think like, oh, that those people are probably really annoying to hang out with because they're so arty. But oh you, no, I, I know exactly that that feeling. Yeah, I know I know what that is. So how are yeah, how are yeah, how are, yeah. how are you not that? Well, I mean, I think I mean art is just a description. That doesn't mean it's great or superior or anything. It's like it's just to acknowledge. I mean, I'm you know when I say I'm an artist, I'm not always proud of that. I mean, I see it as being a, a slightly annoying obsession <laughs> to, to some people, but you know, it's some, some good things come out of it and it, and it, and it seems to work for me, but yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you mean though. There's, there's a, there's a, not just pretentious, but a kind of, um, you know, like the, the, uh, like the world doesn't understand me sort of thing. And I, I, I always hated that, you know, it's not up to the world to understand you. It's up to you to, you know, make yourself understood, right? Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, but do, do your fans do your fans understand that about you? Do that are, do you have the type of relationship with them where anything you do they go, "Oh yeah, because, you know, Well, the- I think some of them, yeah, but I mean, we don't we're, we're not we're not playing to millions and millions of normal housewives either, you right. know. I mean, we're we're, you know, a lot of times we are playing to, you know, 
the the kind of you know the the freakiest of the the freaks out there <laughs> right right <laughs> which we want that you can change your mind it's not that big of a deal unless you're embarrassed about it or you made too much of a fuss about it but you know we do that all the time now you just say it's going to be this and then if you walked in to the studio a week later you'd be like well what happened to that be like oh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's not that anymore i didn't like it as much after a while you know and you <laughs> and you can deal. just do that it's just a song it's just you know it's not that big of a deal and we do that all the time. Sometimes we change our mind five or six times and say, well, here it is. Yeah. You know, and you don't know when it's right. Who knows? I mean, there's there's some kind of, you know, lie about art that you just intuitively know. It's like, no, you don't, you don't know anything. You know, you just hope that something happens and you hear it as if someone else was doing it instead of you doing it. Because when you know you're doing it, it just doesn't feel... It, it, I mean, it doesn't surprise you. It's like scratching your own head. Yeah. If someone else scratches your head, it feels absolutely wonderful. <laughs> and it's the same thing. It, when you scratch it, your own head, you just feel like a well, chimp. No, it feels pretty good. Yeah. It's better than nothing. But I mean, when someone else does it, it's like they could just do it all day. Yeah. And it's and I don't know why. It's 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 virtually the same thing. But you, it's not a surprise to you. It's not an it's it's not nuanced. You know what you're doing. And it's the same thing. So, you know, I try to arrive at all art in that same way. It's like, even though I'm you know, doing a lot of it, I want it to be put into someone else's hand and I want that to be what I'm affected. Yes, by. exactly. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're essentially, you're bringing your half to the table, which is the thing. And the audience is bringing their baggage and emotional stuff that <laughs> fill in the gaps and help, you know, complete the story. Well, that, well, all, all music I think is made I mean, that's why music can be so powerful. It's like there's the music and then there's what your life and what you bring to it. And that, right. that can make it the greatest thing ever. I mean, it really is just a song. But what you think it is, you know, in art and music, it, it is that. I mean, a lot of things, that's not true. But if you think it's the best song ever, then it is. It, that's, that's, you know, no one can come up to you, you know, and tell you, you know, that song that you like, it's not any good. It's like <laughs> if you like it. It's good. It's, it's good, good. to do. Yeah. And if you don't like it, no one can come up to you and say, well, that song that you hate, you know, it's really good. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's like food. You know, if you don't like it, it doesn't really matter if someone is saying, well, this is a five-star restaurant you know, whatever. It's like, well, I don't like it. And it's true <laughs> for that. But some things This isn't life, a long John but, Silvers. But some things in life aren't like that. And they, we have to decide, oh, well, this is good and this is bad, but, you know. But with art and food – you get to decide. You get, you get to be in control. <laughs> you get to be the critic. Well, I hope you do this Long John Silver's promotion. I think it'd be great. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Just waiting yeah. to happen. Um, and uh, good luck on the show tonight. Well, have, a, have a great time. I think it's going it's to be marvelous. Yeah. And uh, special somehow now. Well, so people buy two. They just buy two, yeah. <laughs> I think it does make it slightly less. Uh, well, you know, you, you could be right, but everyone we still know, the really hardcore collectors buy two. I mean, I I I I I spy that vintage-looking Star Trek shirt underneath your jacket. So I, I you did. <laughs> Is there, do you think that's good or bad? I think it's awesome. I do too. Because otherwise, you're buying it from, you know, like the Star Trek dot com, and it just. You know, the idea that you can buy it at Target, I think, is a great. It's thing. nice that this well, and it the, looks vintage. It's kind of got it the does. yeah, you know. It's nice that it's yeah. nice that it's culturally acceptable now. Do you collect don't anything, you, Wayne? I I I don't think I do, but <gasps> I mean, I, yeah. Those shoes and I were just talking because I collect sneakers and those are pretty great. Yeah, these are the uh, SB line. I, I, all I do is collect. Well, them. I don't collect sneakers. No, you do. You yeah. and you got me the, the, these, but I think the the purple iridescent thing is. Those are some almost Back to the Future two looking shoes yeah. that you got that you're rocking yeah. there. No one can afford the real Back to the Future shoes. They're, they're like t ten grand or twenty grand. grand. Oh, they're sixteen <laughs> grand or something crazy like that. I got some of the I got some of the the limited edition Nikes that for for Alien from Alien when she oh, wore those yeah those are nice. I got some of those but Wayne also Wayne, Wayne's rocking some pretty nice lavender well, but no Rick got me these see he got me these they look good though they're very cozy for sure I I, yeah. I like them so you said you didn't collect, you don't collect anything I don't think so see but I, I maybe maybe I'm wrong I, I don't think so four, four, I think we started to collect. Things like, you know, even like things like that, that you think, man, that's just cool. And then you, you get a lot of them. And you don't know where to put them after a while. But I would imagine, in, uh, do you still live in Oklahoma? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, yeah. You, you, you probably have quite a compound in Oklahoma, I would imagine. Well, yeah, yeah. And we do have a lot of stuff, but it's not, I know. I think we've, we've 
I think because we would start to make things that we thought people would collect. Right. You know, and then we, 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 the concept of making like candy and stuff like that, that was, that we thought was sort of temporary. That was our solution to be like, do we really need another (laughs) plastic thing that goes on the shelf? (laughs) And yeah, I I don't know. Is there a weird flaming lips thing that you made where you're like, ah, maybe we shouldn't have made that. Well, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's lots of that, but not, not. I mean, I, now I think we're more. Um, we like the idea that we, you know, that we make stuff, and for people that like it, it's they, right. They think it's wonderful. I think they, you know, they want to give you their their money and have a little piece of something that you've made. I think if it's if it feels more, um, more like a piece of art or something, right? You know, like when we do. Uh, posters and stuff, you know, you try as best you can to have them feel like they're a limited, right? You know, silk screen, real, real people did them or something like that. Well, because you, but you're not just a, you guys aren't just a band though. You, you guys are an experience. Your live <laughs> well, shows yeah. an experience. Your but fan I, community I is think an all, experience. All artists probably think that. Though. Right. Yeah. So. Did you ever see the Tubes perform? Um, no, but I've seen, you know, you've seen videos and pictures and yeah, it, but, but I didn't always, I mean, I've, I only know a little bit of their music, but yeah. it, you know, but it, obviously they're, you know, some kind of insane well, stage a, show at some point. Those kind yeah. of legendary stage shows where yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, it, when you understand a little bit of the business of the side, you go, first of all, how'd you guys make any money <laughs> with right. like that many people yeah, on exactly. stage yeah, yeah. and that many theatrics? Yeah. See, you shouldn't ask those questions. <laughs> that, that, uh, yeah, yeah. That's like, that's, that's. You know, no one asked the Wizard of Oz, like, how'd you, how'd you pay for all this right. stuff? Yeah, that ruins it. Yeah, that's not no that fun. it should, not yeah. not that that should be their main <laughs> focus, but I just feel like you probably shouldn't lose money when you go on a tour. It's- well, yeah, but see, now everybody's aware of those things. Yeah, right. that, that's no that's no fun. Yeah. Um, we would sometimes uh, think about the Parliament Funkadelic uh, mothership, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and there's, there's not that much... Um, even old videos of that any, anymore. You know, there's pictures and there's stories about it. But there was one actual video. It's probably out there on YouTube somewhere or something. And, and, the, and the spaceship is just actually like this big. You know, you could just, you could just hold it in your hand. And it came down on a, on a cable, um, you know, like somewhere over the audience for just a moment. And it sort of went on a cable. And then they just appeared on stage, you know. And, yeah. and, but the idea, like, you'd see a spaceship – you just see a photo of it, and you wouldn't know how big it is. And then they're all dressed up like, you know, crazy, you know, like they came from outer space or whatever. And you would never think about it. But, like, yeah, nowadays there would just be too much evidence of, like, <laughs> right. look how little it actually is. 20,000 yeah. pictures yeah. on Instagram. This doesn't, this doesn't work. Look how little it is and all that. But, um, yeah, so it, it is diff- more difficult nowadays to, to you know – to have the mystery be compelling because right. everybody wants to know uh, how's how's it made now you know i mean that's how how are things done right. that's that's part of the cool world we live in is you get to find out i mean it used to be i mean we would we would ask the question how do they put the m on the m and m's mm-hmm. you know it's like every one of them they're little they're little and they're fragile and yet when you look at a 10 million M&Ms laid out. They all have this little white M on them. Right. And back in the day, you would just go, oh, my God, well, how do they do that? I mean, what kind of great futuristic machine is taking every one of those and putting an M on it? And then now now there's these shows. You know, they show you how everything's made. And it's it's – it's it, not a large anthropomorphic M M&M and M stamping. <laughs> well, it's a on big, it's a tiny big, brothers. It's, it's a big. What is it? It's a big silk screen. Conveyor belt. Oh, it's, it's a silk know, it's, screen. It's like it just lays on there and hits them all. And I know. I mean, it's just a. It, and so, for me, I sometimes much time, and by the end of it, I would have six weeks of paid vacation every year. You know, sure. to be a touring, to go out on tour and do all that, and still get your eighty dollars a week from Long John Silver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> but I think it really, it really, it, it really worked for me, you know, because I didn't want to, I didn't really want a serious job that took, you know, a lot, a lot of time and a lot of responsibility. Um, with that, I probably wouldn't have been very good at it anyway. And this was the type of job that within the first two weeks, you've got this thing. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, it's kind of mindless work in a way once you know, you know, the routines of it, and. Yeah, I, I, it really worked for me because it, I, you know, it, it, it made me enough uh, money that I could sort of live, uh, 
And a pirate costume. It, well, yeah. You know, yeah, year round, yeah. you could you could be I a mean, pirate. Funny now, I do I do occasionally wear an eye patch on stage. <laughs> but I, yeah. shout out to your roots. Well, I, it, it and plus it just looks cool on an old guy. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, know you just look tougher or something. But yeah, I, I think it's funny how all those things. They do connect, you know. It's like that's the that's the wonder of the subconscious. You know, you think it's you doing it with your with your conscious mind up here, and there's all these things working below the surface that you just get to have for yeah, better or for worse. But I, I also yeah. I also love that you know because you referred to your to your band as like oh we're this arty band and we got this mainstream thing. But I love that you're not snobby about any of it. Where you're like, hey, that's kind of cool. Like you embrace. You well, know, you seem very positive about everything, and not like and you, not. And then when I hear arty band, I think like, oh, that those people are probably really annoying to hang out with because they're so arty. But oh you, no, I, I know exactly that that feeling. Yeah, I know I know what that is. So how yeah, are how are yeah, how are, yeah. how are you not that? Well, I mean, I think I mean art is just a description. That doesn't mean it's great or superior or anything. It's like it's just to acknowledge. I mean, I'm you know when I say I'm an artist, I'm not always proud of that. I mean, I see it as being a, a slightly annoying obsession <laughs> to, to some people, but you know it's. Some 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 good things come out of it, and it and it and it seems to work for me. But yeah, I, I I know exactly what you mean. Though there's there's a there's a not just pretentious, but a kind of um, you know like the the like the world doesn't understand me sort of thing. And I, I I always hated that. You know, it's not up to the world to understand you. It's up to you to you know. Make yourself understood, right? Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, but do, do your fans do your fans understand that about you? Do that? Are, do you have the type of relationship with them where anything you do, they go, "Oh yeah," because you know. Well, I think some of them, yeah, but I mean, we don't. We're not. We're not. We're not playing to millions and millions of normal housewives either. You right. Know? I mean, we're we're you know a lot of times we are playing to, you know, the the kind of. A whole album and they, you know, like a group like the Bee Gees or something that you could like singles right. off the radio or something. Even David Bowie. You know, there's a few of his albums that are, you know, that you would know the whole album. But there's quite a few of his albums that you just know a, a couple of the songs. And right. it's David Bowie. Right. So, yeah, I, I think it can go all over the place. You know, I think the Rolling Stones maybe even could be like that, you know, where I wouldn't know every song on even their biggest albums. Right. You know? Well, yeah, I mean, because I think some... I mean, I understand the idea of like, okay, we are assembling songs and go, okay, these songs all make sense <laughs> together. But that's different than, you know, especially something like Yoshimi, where you go, okay, you start, you start at the beginning, and then there, there's a story right, by right. the end, and you can no, listen to the whole no, thing. No, I agree. I just, I, I just sometimes have a hard time saying I think one is better than the other. It's right. Like you know, I mean, I think some some artists. I, I think what the difference is is they feel like I'm just I'm a singer, and then you get to hear me sing. It doesn't really matter what the song right. is or what all the other stuff is about. And I think as the Flaming Lips, I mean, we take it the other way. It's like we're not really like entertainers. We're we're making this this bunch of you know sounds and you know all these things. It's not it, you know it's not like just put a microphone in front of us and you know it's so. Yeah, that, I think that's probably the difference. You know, Mick Jagger probably thinks, yeah, well, you just want to – of course you want to hear Mick Jagger. It doesn't really matter what song I'm doing. Right. You know, whereas it would, it would be the opposite with us. It's like I don't, I'm not sure you really want to hear us. It's everything that we've made up or – you know, it's all a, a construct. To sort right. Of, yeah. So, Did you ever see the Tubes perform? Um, no, but I've seen, you know, you've seen videos and pictures and yeah, it, but, but I didn't always, I mean, I've, I only know a little bit of their music, but yeah. it, you know, but it, obviously they're, you know, some kind of insane well, stage a, show at some point. Those kind yeah. of legendary stage shows where yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, it, when you understand a little bit of the business of the side, you go, first of all, how'd you guys make any money <laughs> with right. like that many people yeah, on exactly. stage yeah, yeah. and that many theatrics? Yeah. See, you shouldn't ask those questions. <laughs> that, that, uh, yeah, yeah. That's like, that's, that's. You know, no one asked the Wizard of Oz like, "How'd you, how'd you pay for all this right. stuff?" Yeah, that ruins it. Yeah, that's not no that fun. it should, not yeah. not that that should be their main <laughs> focus, but I just feel like you probably shouldn't lose money when you go on a tour. It's well, yeah, but see, now everybody's aware of those things. Yeah, right. that that's no that's no fun. Yeah, um, we would sometimes uh, think about the Parliament Funkadelic uh, mothership, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and there's there's, there's not that much. Um, even old videos of that any, anymore. You know, there's pictures and there's stories about it. But there was one actual 
video. It's probably out there on YouTube somewhere or something. And, and, the, and the spaceship is just actually like this big. You know, you could just, you could just hold it in your hand. And it came down on a, on a cable, um, you know, like somewhere over the audience for just a moment. And it sort of went on a cable. When you are, start collaborating with Miley Cyrus, are they, are they going, <laughs> yeah, because that's what I'm, they do? Or they go, well, what is this? Well, I think there's, a, there's the, the, I mean, because we've been doing it for uh, a couple of years now, there are, I see there are segments of our audience, you know. Um, there'd be one segment of our audience that's older that wouldn't really know um, Miley Cyrus. They wouldn't really know even who she is. And they would probably think, well, if the Flaming Lips like her, I like her. And sure. It doesn't matter. And then there'd be this middle audience that's just old enough and young enough to know who she is and probably know her from more than Hannah Montana than anything else. Right. And would think, oh my God, this is, uh, why is this? You know, or the flame, the flame is trying to go, you know, in, in this commercial way or this Walt Disney world. What is this? And uh, they're probably the, the, the ones that were the most confused and the most anti. Uh, Miley flaming lips, you know, and then you've got, you know, the segment that's young that kind of knows Miley from being more of like the twerking and stuff like right. that than from anything else. And they think it's, it's fun and radical. Yeah. And so, you know, so there's, you know, the old people that don't know, they love it. And the young people that do know, they love it. There's that area in the middle. <laughs> and I can understand that, you know, I can understand if you, you know, if you grew up in that time where, you know, you, you loved your music and yet, you were kind of assailed by the popularity of something like a, 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 you know, like Miley. You know, you might be annoyed that why are, you know, why are these guys now joining forces with her? And I think I'm probably more in the old person category where I wouldn't really know that much about her other than the little bits of it that I thought were interesting. Sure. Starting in 2013. And now as I go back, I get more of an, you know, an idea of what, you know, some of the world thinks of her. So it would be it would be kind of a, a crossover of, of all that. Yeah. But I think it all gets a little less um, intense, um, the bad part of it anyway, once we made the record with her and people get to listen to it and they can see, oh, this is what we're doing. Yeah. You know? And well, it's almost uh, like you have to experience things before you can judge them. Well, no. I mean, people love to judge, you know, <laughs> and people love to, you know, they love to not have to sort it out for themselves. But but again, I think that's up to us. You know, that'd be up to us to say, I understand where you're coming from. And I, and I think that's what makes it um, appealing to us, too, to work with her, that it would be, yeah. oh, my God, what is it? It's, it's, it's interesting. It Maybe interesting for the bad or good, but it's interesting. And so I think that, you know, would absolutely be the thing like, well, yeah, let's see what this is about. And then once we, you know, got to know her and became friends with her and started to make music, you know, all that doesn't, n none of that would matter after a while. But right. that initial thing of it, I still think it's, it, it, less and less now would it start to... And <laughs> just put the CD in. I have a little sticky note on the back that says Prince touched this. That is fantastic. How else would you know? Because it's just the CD. It's not Make a song. plaque. Get it no, engraved. I, I, I know. It's I know. time. We could probably do some forensics. If we had to, and know that that's his fingerprints or something. And clone him? He probably wore gloves, though. You know, he probably is like, no, man. It's very possible you know, he might not have touched you anything. You can't have... You're not allowed. You can't have access to any of my DNA or anything. He might have, he yeah. he might have showered in a purple jumpsuit. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, he was, maybe he was a never nude. But, I mean, that being said, I mean, we did absolutely feel honored to be just in the room with him. <laughs> of course. And that's a great thing. He is just a man. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But you but fill that, in the story, though. Yeah. But the, all that, that thrill and excitement and that nervousness and everything, he's, the, he's made that. And that's a, that's a great, great, great creation to say it's just his presence is is cool well I, that's you know. true but i do like that you're approachable <laughs> that's nice that's well, nice yeah. that you're approachable. we probably tried to be more like prince it just didn't work it just well. didn't work yeah. so didn't work too much yeah here we are yeah. well i also appreciate your enthusiasm and i love that you uh i love that you're sincere and earnest and just and and it doesn't really seem like you like stuff that you like and you don't like stuff you don't like and you, there's <laughs> but there's no like pretense behind it it's just uh and maybe that's a midwest thing too maybe that's kind of a midwest thing yeah i, I don't know i mean maybe it's just that we're older and it just yeah it just I, doesn't I, matter I anymore know. or it's just yeah it's just more fun to not be so um so intense about it yeah, yeah. intensity can be a great thing but it can also be like 
Yeah. In moderate in doses yeah. it's fine. Yeah. So but maybe, all the time. Maybe I'm I'm learning a little bit of that. Yeah. From you. Maybe I'm learning that from you. Listen, yeah. if anyone learned anything from me, I would feel like uh I would be surprised. But then I would also <laughs> feel uh like it was all it was all worth it up to this moment if someone could take well, away. Well no, something. but you saying even that stuff you said about smoking pot, a lot of people, you know, feel embarrassed, like, oh I don't for some reason it doesn't work for me. But the more you say it, the more it invites the other person to be like, oh, I know, I know what you mean. By that. Yeah, yeah, I just don't, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 you know, for someone who was very afraid when I was younger about fitting in and not fitting in, I feel like now the older guy, like, well, I, this, I, this is it. What do you want? And I was like, this is it. This is what it is. So this is who I am, and you know. But uh, but I, I really wish I could fucking go to the show tonight. I didn't know it was tonight. I know. No, it's 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 too crowded already. You I, shouldn't come. I, all right. I, I, Listen, I, I accept your invitation, not, Wayne. Because then if we have to invite everybody around, it's like, now, yeah, there's just, there's just not enough room. No, Katie's watching a movie. She's not even paying attention to this. She's not going to know. She's not going to have any idea. But I really would love to see you live at some point soon. Maybe if there's a... Uh... We'll come back. Yeah, we'll, yeah, oh, we'll, fantastic. we'll do more. Yeah. I would and, love and, to. And we'll, we'll include you in the loop. Please do. Yeah. Please, please, yeah. please, please, please yeah. do. It was yeah. an absolute yeah. pleasure to meet yeah. you. Well, you too. Um, yes. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oaksy Melody is the album. And yes. you know, I was very fortunate. You know, relaxed. That, I was something. very fortunate in college that I had a couple really bad experiences mm-hmm. with... With weed that I yeah. just never did it again. No, see, we're the same like that. I talk about this all the time. It's like there are some people that can just smoke the most potent pot all the time and never. The worst it gets for them know. is they go, I'm really stoned. <laughs> but for me, I was like, do I need to go to the hospital? That's I'm, me. I'm dying. That's, no, that's me. I, 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 yeah, I would get anxiety. I would, everything would be magnified. <laughs> All the bad things would be <laughs> magnified. Yeah. 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 And then, yeah. But, but then real pot smokers go, Oh, you just got some. You didn't get good weed. Like, well, yeah, I don't. I'm just not gonna. I, I'm not gonna take the journey to find the good stuff. Okay. Well, I. But I admire that they, they, they probably have some other disposition than we do. You know, I mean, I I probably worry too much about things that are never going to happen, and they probably don't worry enough about things that really are going to happen. And you know, when they get stoned, it's like it's a wonderful world. You know, serial killers and all that. Who cares? You know. And when I get stoned, everybody. Is a little bit suspect. Everything could happen. Chaos really does rule, and then and I'm scared, and, and it doesn't work for me. You just yeah. ball up and wait. I just remember balling up and just waiting for it to pass. It and doesn't. Like- I know that that's the dilemma. I mean, it's it is funny because it seems like being stoned is uh, you know again it's not that serious. But once you're in that state of mind, you can't get out of it. No. Nothing you can do gets you out of it. You can't get drunk. You can't nope. exercise. You know, there's nothing you can do. You kind of just have to wait it out. Hopefully fall asleep and wake up <laughs> and you're back to normal. But it is. It's a it, it for. Yeah. And, and I didn't realize it when I was young, how many times I was getting like a contact high. Oh, I would be around my brothers and their friends and they're smoking some potent weed. And and I and I would often feel that way and knowing that, that I wasn't you know, what was this? It wasn't until I was older that I realized, oh, that's that's what that was. Pot's doing that to me. And yeah, that's so, funny. Yeah, yeah, I think it's probably been I think 2002 maybe was the last yeah, yeah. time that a it happened. Time ago now, and yeah. it, I just don't. But you don't smoke it now. I don't do anything. So right, right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It, and especially that. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I was younger, I mean, I did fear, you know, all the bad things that people would say about drugs and being around, um, a, you know, a lot of people, even in my family, becoming drug addicts and all that. It does kind of and, – and, and I think you're probably like me. You're just a worrier. You know, you just A hundred percent. Yeah. And I always just think, yeah, and, and, and this lapse into irresponsibility and what would happen to you and what damage would you do and all that. And that – if you're like that, you don't want to be taken. No. Five hits of LSD and <laughs> no, five God, hits no. of Molly. And yeah, no. but people do. I know. Yeah, I was yeah. never, I never, <laughs> and I never did, shru- I never really did anything other than weed and I used to drink a lot, but, but the, but I never did mushrooms either. And that's one where people are like, you know, it's weird at first, but you just got to ride it out. And I go, <laughs> I would fucking, before, I, I would, in the ride it out phase, I would fucking, j- it doesn't matter. It's like food. You know, if you don't like it, it doesn't really matter if someone is saying, well, this is a five-star restaurant or you know, whatever. It's like, well, I don't like it. And it's true <laughs> for that. But some things This in isn't life, a long John but, Silvers. But some things in life aren't like that. And they, we have to decide, oh, well, this is good and this is bad. But, you know, but with art and food, 
You get to decide. You get you get to be in control. <laughs> you get to be the critic. Well, I hope you do this Long John Silver's promotion. I think it'd be great. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Just waiting yeah. to happen. Um, and uh, good luck on the show tonight. Well, have, a, have a great time. I think it's going it's to be marvelous. Yeah. And and thank yeah, you yeah. so much for coming. It's such a pleasure yeah. to meet you. We, we, this is like a, a little bit of therapy session for both of us. It is a little bit. Yes. Yeah. I'd, more away. for you, I felt like though. Really. Well, I, you know, there were a couple times where I thought, oh, I think Wayne's getting a little teary now. I was the whole time. Yeah, the entire yeah. he's might be yeah. on the edge of a real breakthrough. Yeah. Right now. No. This no, is it. No, no. no. Now? Yeah, Wait, yeah. is it now? No, I didn't feel I didn't feel too teary. No. no I, more fun. Like, okay, yeah, good. Yeah, we good, were laughing good, good. laughing together. Good. Well, yeah. I you know, maybe we're running together. Your enthusiasm is is contagious. Well, yours I mean, is too, to though. Me. It's not to them. I mean, no, 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 no. He's on, on his phone. Phones. Yeah, they're on he's their phone. Thinking about the Long John Silver's yeah. deal and how that's yeah. gonna pay off he's thinking about his at some point. And Prince. He's looking at where he's gonna get some shoes. I almost kinda feel like you have to frame the C D that was given. I'm so glad to hear that you saved it. It's, it's <laughs> that is fantastic. And you just make a plaque underneath that says, Prince thanks you for this. And just put the CD in. I have a little sticky note on the back that says, Prince touched this. That is fantastic. How else would you know? Because it's just the CD. It's not make a song. plaque. Get it no, engraved. I, I, I know. It's I know. time. We could probably do some forensics. If we had to, and know that that's his fingerprints or something. And clone him? He probably wore gloves, though. You know, he probably is like, no, man. It's very possible you know, he might not have touched you anything. You can't have... You're not allowed. You can't have access to any of my DNA or anything. He might have, he yeah. he might have showered in a purple jumpsuit. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, he was, maybe he was a never nude. But, I mean, that being said, I mean, we did absolutely feel honored to be just in the room with him. <laughs> of course. And that's a great thing. He is just a man. You know what I mean? But you but fill that, in the story, though. Yeah. But the, all that, that thrill and excitement and that nervousness and everything, he's, the, he's made that. And that's a, that's a great, great, great creation to say it's just his presence is is cool. Well, I, that's you know. true, but I do like that you're approachable. <laughs> that's nice. That's well, nice yeah. that you're approachable. We probably tried to be more like Prince. It just didn't work It just well. didn't work. Yeah. So didn't work too much. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. Well, I also appreciate your enthusiasm, and I love that you uh, – I love that you're sincere and earnest and just and, – and it doesn't really seem like – you like stuff that you like, and you don't like stuff you don't like, and there's, <laughs> but there's no like pretense behind it. It's just, uh, and maybe that's a Midwest thing too. Maybe that's kind of a Midwest thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just that we're older, and it just, yeah, it just I, doesn't I, matter I anymore. Know. Or it's just, yeah, it's just more fun. Stuff or what does he collect? He keeps it in the box. Yep. And the whole room looks like it's all his clothes. You know, the crazy thing now is yeah. that the, the, the idea of whether or not to take something out of the box is, is so because when it, at that time. People didn't really think about that, and so it things were more limited. Yeah. But now everyone, people make things with the idea of like, oh, you're going. This is a collector's thing. So I wonder if that makes it less special somehow. Now, well, so most people buy two. they just buy two. Yeah. <laughs> I think it does make it slightly less. Uh, well, you know, you, you could be right, but everyone we still know, the really hardcore collectors buy two. I mean, I I I I, I spy that vintage-looking Star Trek shirt underneath your jacket, so I. Got it I at you did. <laughs> is there, do you think that's good or bad? I think it's awesome. I do too. Because otherwise, you're buying it from, you know, like the Star Trek dot com, and it just you know the idea that you can buy it at Target, I think, is a great. It's thing. nice that this. Well, and it the, looks vintage. It's kind of got the does. yeah. You know, it's nice that it's yeah. nice that it's culturally acceptable now. Do you collect anything, Wayne? I I I don't think I do, but <gasps> I mean, I mean, yeah. Those shoes are were just talking because I collect sneakers and those are pretty great. Yeah, these are the uh, SB line. I, I, all I do is collect. Well, them. I don't collect sneakers. No, you do. You yeah. and you got me the, the, these, but I think the the purple iridescent thing is. Those are some almost Back to the Future two looking shoes yeah. that you got that you're rocking yeah. there. No one can afford the real Back to the Future shoes. They're, they're like t- ten grand or twenty grand. Oh, they're grand. sixteen grand or something crazy like that. I got some of the I got some of the the limited edition Nikes that for for Alien from Alien when she oh, wore those yeah those are nice. I got some of those but Wayne also Wayne, Wayne's rocking some pretty nice lavender well, but no Rick got me these see he got me these they look good though they're very cozy for sure I I, yeah. I like them so you said you didn't call you don't collect anything I don't think so see but I, I maybe maybe I'm wrong I, I don't think so four, four, I think we started to collect. Things like, you know, even like things like that, that you think, man, that's just cool. And then you, you get a lot of them. And you don't know where to put them after a while. But I would imagine, you uh, know, do you still live in Oklahoma? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah. You, you you probably have quite a compound in Oklahoma, I would imagine. Well, yeah. Yeah. And we do have a lot of stuff, but it's not. I know. I think we've we've 
I think because we would start to make things that we thought people would collect. Right. You know, and then we, 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 the concept of making like candy and stuff like that, that was, that we thought was sort of temporary. That right. was our solution to be like, do we really need another <laughs> plastic thing that goes on the shelf? <laughs> and yeah, I, I don't know. Is there a weird flaming lips thing that you made where you're like, ah, maybe we shouldn't have made that? Well, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's lots of that, but not, not. I mean, I, now I think we're more. Um, we like the idea that we, you know, that we make stuff, and for people that like it, it's they, right. They think it's wonderful. I think they, you know, they want to give you their their money and have a little piece of something that you've made. I think if it's if, if it, I, it, and it's the perfect balance because if she just got pre made meals delivered to her, yeah. probably wouldn't be that fun. If she just got, you know, I don't know, if she just had to go to the store and get her own stuff, it's not, it's not as fun. So it's the perfect combination of like being active but passive at the same yeah. time. So uh, again, all for less than 10 bucks per meal. You can customize recipes based on preference. Select a delivery option that is right for you. There's no weekly commitment. You only get deliveries when you want them. So just in June, just for example, warm smoked trout, asparagus salad, fingerling potatoes, garlic croutons spiced zucchini enchiladas with creamy lime and tomato rice. Uh, you have uh, peach honey glazed chicken, mashed sweet potatoes, collard greens, Thai basil. These are just some examples of, of, it all of stuff so that you can good. make. I'm so hungry. Yeah, I know. Me too. I actually, <laughs> I start like I had to wipe a little bit of spittle out of the corner of my mouth. It's just when I got to the word Thai basil, I just like okay, easy there. But check out this week's menu. Get your first three meals free with free shipping. Go to blueapron.com/nerdist. You're gonna love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. Don't wait. Blueapron.com/nerdist. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. And now. Here's a better way to podcast when there's podcast number 875 with Wayne Coyne as Katie Levine rolls the thing. Now entering Nerdist.com. Welcome. All right. Does this place always look like this? It does. Yeah, this is my, my dressing room office is through that door. And so I took over the space and, oh, I see. and sort of, I, I'll show you when we're done. But it's, yeah, uh, yeah it all, it all kind of looks like this. Is this like stuff that you've just collected over your, over the years? Yes. And it's, it's. I really wish I could fit more of it in here because I'm, oh, I'm just running. I'm, I'm running out of space for all my fucking toys. And my wife is awesome, so she keeps like she she just orders stuff. Goes here, I got you. Like this job of the hut, I gave this job, and I go, that's really great. There's we don't have any room, please. Well, no, I know that's what everybody. That's I know that's that's the dilemma. It's like the world of plastic toys is like well, where do you put it? <laughs> I never thought I'd be in a space where I married someone who actually understood the things I liked, and I got to a point where I was like, "You gotta stop! I don't know where I'm gonna put all this stuff anymore." Right. We're done. Can you call my wife for me because my son's Star Wars collection is squeezing us out of the, the house. <laughs> well, and that's she fair though. Less understand. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it all original action figures and stuff, or what does he collect? He keeps it in the box. Yep. And the whole room looks like a Star Wars. I got like, well, I this, I this is it. What do you want? And I was like, this is it. This is what it is. So this is who I am, and you know, but uh, but I I really wish I could fucking go to the show tonight. I didn't know it was tonight. I know. No, it's 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 too crowded already. You I, shouldn't come. I, all right. I, I, Listen, I I accept your invitation, not, Wayne. Because because then if we have to invite everybody around, it's like now, yeah, there's, there's just not enough room. No, Katie's watching a movie. She's not even paying attention to this. She's not gonna know. She's not gonna have any idea. But I really would love to see you live at some point soon. Maybe if there's a we'll uh, come back. Yeah, we'll, yeah. Oh, fantastic! We'll, we'll do more. Yeah, I would and, love and, to, and we'll we'll include you in the loop. Please do. Yeah. Please, please, yeah. please, please, please yeah. do. It was yeah. an absolute yeah. pleasure to meet yeah. you. Well, you too. Um, yes. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. Um, Oxy Melody is the album and yeah. the tour that's coming up that is now in progress and coming up U.S. Yeah. and Europe. Yep. Yeah. And uh, the and world. We call it the whole the Earth. world Earth tour. The whole yeah. Earth tour. Yeah. And uh, because we would someday we should it would be great to tour in outer space and the moon and all the other galaxies. Zero gravity. Someday, no, no. I mean, but but we're in your like your Star Wars. 
Yeah. Um, um, wallpaper. yeah. Although I will say this in space, no one can hear you shred because there's no atmosphere to, co- to collect the sound waves. Well, that's if you're like in, in space with no helmet or oxygen or anything. Right. We would be in a room. Oh, in, I see. Okay, in, that makes in, more sense. In like a spaceship or something where we could play music. Okay, okay, yeah, I like yeah. this. It's not just going to be in You'll be open, in the out in open, frozen space. You'll be in the Long John Silver station, <laughs> space station. <laughs> I feel like there's gonna be a, he's reminding me. No one can hear you in space. Been, don't, don't mess this up. There's yeah. going to be a space station somewhere, and there will be fast food on that space station when people yeah. start populating. It'll be yeah. just like a food court, a because space it's, food court. Yeah, we and, and we'd know um, that's not healthy, but it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. Fuck it. You're in space. Who cares? Uh, but I like but, – but you have to remember the idea was it was fast. Very fast. Yeah, and there was just no time to make this kind of No time to make a pot roast yeah. or catch a fish and skin it. And It's like they just like right See, there. See, we were remarking the other day of how the world's changed now. It's like it used to be you left the house for entertainment, but you cooked at home. <laughs> only oh, my sense. God. You're right. But nowadays it's like you will not cook anything at home. It's like we go out to eat and everything entertainment we just have right there. We wouldn't dare go that to the movie That is a theater. fantastic point you know, that I never thought – I have not thought of. Yeah, there's more restaurants than ever and yet they're all still here. We're because. lazy when it comes to everything but food. <laughs> we're lazy about well, everything Well, no, we're else. lazy because we don't want to make it. We don't want to go shopping. We don't want to cook it. We don't want to clean up. We don't want to do the dishes. We don't want to do anything. We want to give you $5 and you'll do everything and we'll just – We'll just eat it. Go home and watch more Netflix. I am often – fascinated by the idea that we just eat whatever someone brings to us without any question as well, to, yeah. you know. What- See, you're worried again. Oh, I'm yeah. not re- the world's changed now. It's like it used to be you left the house for entertainment, but you cooked at home. <laughs> Only oh, my sense. God, you're right. But nowadays it's like you will not cook anything at home. It's like we go out to eat and everything entertainment we just have right there. We wouldn't dare go that to the movie That is a theater. fantastic point you know, that I never thought – I have switched. not thought of. Yeah, there's more restaurants than ever and yet they're all still here. We're because. lazy when it comes to everything but food. <laughs> we're lazy about well, everything Well, no, we're else. lazy because we don't want to make it. We don't want to go shopping. We don't want to cook it. We don't want to clean up. We don't want to do the dishes. We don't want to do anything. We want to give you $5 and you'll do everything and we'll just – We'll just eat it. Go home and watch more Netflix. I am often – fascinated by the idea that we just eat whatever someone brings to us without any question as well, to, yeah. you know. See, what, you're worried again. Oh, I'm yeah. not really worried. Yes, I know. but, you know, no, I'll I mean, still do it. You mean, you mean like Postmates or something like, like that? Like Postmates or something where yeah. it's like, hey, I don't really know any of these people. They're well, just bringing something, you know, like the guy. Well, but what would they do to it? We had Postmates delivered yesterday and someone said that to us. And we we're like, you know, why would they care? <laughs> I know, I See, know. See, I'm like, we're just another – Useless customer. Maybe on their some list guy's mad at Postmates and he wants to like just uh, just right. like drop a turd in no, a bag I, and I not know. tell you about it and go here's your chow mein. But and you're wouldn't like, oh, this you is... know it's a turd or would you just eat it thinking man that that looks like a turd but I I think I'm gonna eat it. I feel like it would take me like <laughs> six or seven bites like three bites in. This might be a turd. Mom nom nom nom. God, I'm still not sure. No, I mean I, I, I that that probably will happen now that you've you know unfortunately about I it. unfortunately yeah. I I, yeah. I inherited a, a weird thing about food from my dad where I'll just eat stuff really without really my dad was at a, my one of my favorite dad stories is we were at a cracker barrel once and a fly <laughs> landed in his grits and he fucking just ate around it while the thing struggled to gain freedom he just ate in a moat around a grit moat around the fucking Cause, fly cuz he's cuz he's a manly man <laughs> And, and manly men have been eating around, you know, the the dead insects for centuries. And it was alive. Back. He ate around the thing that was alive. It was like a fucking art piece by the time he was done That's with it. That's amazing. It really was. Did he did he make a stink of it, or is it like no. hey, I'm just I'm just hungry? And That's exactly yeah. what it was. He was like, what am I going to do? Not eat it? Yes, yeah. you're not going to. You shouldn't. But wow. he didn't care. He goes, I ate around it. That was his justification. Wow. Yeah, and that fly died the most the the weirdest death. Of any any creature, looking up at your your My dad. hungry dad. Yeah, yeah. the fly yeah. must have thought, "Oh, this is a predator. I'm going to be." But it's just like, "Oh, I see. He's just going to consume the vicinity around me. He's going to eat the neighborhood and then just leave me where I am." So, so you're you're the thing that you carry with you now is that you would eat the fly, or you would eat around the fly, or you wouldn't. I, I guess I'm confused. I would the, the free the fly, but I would eat around the area where he landed. I would free him. But you wouldn't just say, I. Yeah, this is my, my dressing room office is through that door. And so I took go over the space and, oh, I see. and sort of, I, I'll show you when we're done. But it's. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it all it all kind of looks like this. Is this like stuff that you've just collected over your over the years? Yes, and it's it's. I really wish I could fit more of it in here because I'm oh, I'm just running I'm running out of space for all my fucking toys. And my wife is awesome, so she keeps like she she just orders stuff. And goes here, I got you. Like this job of the hut, I gave this job, and I go, that's really great. There's, we don't have any room, please. Well, no, I know that's what everybody. That's I know that's that's the dilemma. It's like the world of plastic toys is like well, where do you put it? <laughs> I never thought I'd be in a space where I married someone who actually understood the things I liked, and I got to a point where I was like, "You gotta stop! I don't know where I'm gonna put all this stuff anymore." Right. When we're done, can you call my wife for me because my son's Star Wars collection is squeezing us out of the, the house? <laughs> well, that's fair though. Less understand. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it all original action figures and stuff, or what does he it collect? Keeps it in the box. Yep. And the whole room looks like a Star Wars toy. You know, the crazy thing now is yeah. that the, the, the idea of whether or not to take something out of the box is, is so because when it, at that time yeah. people didn't really think about that, and so it things were more limited. Yeah. But now everyone people make things with the idea of like, oh, you're going. This is a collector's thing. So I wonder if that makes it less special somehow now. Yeah, so. Most people buy two. They just buy two, yeah. I think it does make it slightly less. <laughs> well, you know, you, you could be right, but everyone we still know, the really hardcore collectors buy two. I mean, I, 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 I spy that vintage-looking Star Trek shirt underneath your jacket, so I... I you did? <laughs> Is there, do you think that's good or bad? I think it's awesome. I do, too. Because otherwise you're buying it from, you know, like the StarTrek.com, and it just... You know, the idea that you can buy it at Target, I think, is a great. It's thing. nice that this. Well, and so it the, looks vintage. It's kind of got it the. Does. Yeah, you know. It's nice that it's yeah. nice that it's culturally acceptable now. Do you collect those anything, shoes. Wayne? I, I, I don't think I do. But <gasps> I mean, I, yeah, those shoes are insane. Talking, because I collect sneakers, and those are pretty great. Yeah, these are the uh, SB line. I, I, all I do is collect. Well, I don't collect sneakers. No, you do. You yeah. and you got me the, the, these. But I think the the purple iridescent thing is. Those are some almost Back to the Future two looking shoes yeah. that you got that you're rocking yeah. there. No one can afford the real Back to the Future shoes. They're, they're like t- ten grand or twenty grand. Oh, they're grand. sixteen grand or something crazy like that. I got some of the I got some of the the limited edition Nikes that for for Alien from Alien when she oh, wore those. Oh, yeah, those are nice. I got some of those. But Wayne also Wayne, Wayne's rocking some pretty nice lavender. Well, but no, Rick got me these. See, he got me these. They look good though. They're very cozy for sure. I I, yeah. I like them. So you said you didn't collect, you don't collect anything. I don't think so. See, but I, I maybe maybe I'm wrong. I, I don't think so. Four, four, I think we started to collect things like you know even like things like that. That you think, man, 